Hello everybody and welcome to the stream. I uh, just need to hit that button. It's been a little while since there's been a Friday stream. Actually, I'm starting to freaking get a headache as well, which is annoying. But never mind. You need to remember to keep that hydration up. So tonight, we are back for Arkham Horror Season 2. And it is time for... Carnival of Horrors. Um, so we'll kind of get into. Well, we kind of need to look into that a, a little bit. I want to see if there is. Um, I probably should have checked this before going live. This one will do. I need to check and see if there is. Uh, PDF rule set for this particular um, scenario pack. I don't think there is. Wait, what? Battle of the Cherry Blossom Snow. That looks like it's a very big crossover with freaking Cthulhu in one of their other IP. Um, the Legend of the Five Rings. Unfortunately, I don't play Legend of the Five Rings. I don't collect. I was tempted to, but I never did. It's probably for the best. We'll just stick with the Arkham. It's what we know. All right. Rules. No. There isn't any. I haven't even seen any news for this recently. What on earth has been going on? Oh, they've announced the return to the circle undone. When was that announced? Yesterday. My Twitter feed didn't show that, which is annoying. The one before that was... New Arkham cards released. A Light in the Fog, which I've, I've got. Okay. That's yeah, so the only new thing. After that is the Circle Undone. I'll look at that later. Not now. So... Very quickly, we have a shout out to Eskimo. It's a good name. Thank you for following. You followed while we were offline. But it is welcome all the same. Pop that over there. Get that out of the way so I've actually got some room. You can go up over here for the moment. One thing I saw, I was, I was looking on my Twitter, and it came up on my Twitter, and I went and looked a little more into it. Um, they, ha oh, Elgato are releasing, or have released, a green screen mouse pad, and I am very tempted to pick it up, because that there would be amazing for board gaming. Um... All right, no, actually, what did I throw that over there? I need to see this. So, after the end of the... Oh, yeah. You can't see this, but this is everything that was written down from the end of the last campaign. And we have 8 XP to play with. But... Going into scenario mode of this, we it will cost three experience from each investigator to go. 
Hey Salvation! Welcome, welcome to the stream, my friend. How's it going? How was how was the rest of Fall Guys? Go and give that fine gentleman some loving. Give him a follow if you haven't already. Give you another shout out later as well, when a few more people filter in. Anyway, what was I saying? Oh yeah, three experiences needed, so we've got five to play with to adjust these decks. It was actually brutal. I was, um, I was sucking the big hairy meatball. <laughs> uh, metaball, meatball. Uh. <clears throat> uh, no worries, man. I'll give you another one later as well. Um... We got five experience. I could just spend it all on spiritual resolve at this point. Um, I can't get Relic Hunter and the Empty Vessel, which is a shame. So I'll, I'll kind of lay these out here so you can kind of see what they are. Well, I'm, well, I'm looking at the very least, anyway. Stargazing could be interesting. Or are you just getting, um... Were you just getting a terrible, or, like, some of the worst game modes for it? Or were you, um... Was it just, like, the lobby was just getting better and better? Or was it just, like, bad luck? Uh, stargazing, uh, 10 more cards, you put that in the, in the top 10 cards, which is draws one card, gains one resource, then we take an immediate action as if it was their turn. I was playing um, pretty poorly, I cannot lie. Uh, that's fair, that's unfortunate, man. I mean, it happens, it happens. We get that. That is still four experience that I can still spend. Hey, there's that Shepe. Ah, oh, welcome to the stream, my friend. Though you are lurking. It does. Even when I am playing well, I still suck at four guys. That uh, there are games where I know I will just suck, so I just avoid them. Um, but Chefe's in the chat; he's lurking. But go and give him some love. Go, go give him a follow. He is a, he is a very chill dude. Um, but yeah, there there are games where I know I will suck, so I would just avoid like the played the plague. And. Four guys is going to be one of them. <laughs> I'm not going to lie. <laughs> okay. Um... I think Clarity of Mind. It might be time to try and look at picking up Clarity of Mind. Do I have a clarity of mind in here? I might say uh, turn out healing wounds, as I don't really take much physical damage. But if I have a clarity of mind, I can upgrade it. Or we can upgrade first aid. Oh, I do have a clarity of mind, so we can upgrade that. Um, it might actually be the best thing to do. We upgrading clarity of mind. It still costs. It still cost us three experience. Um, 
But what would I swap out for... Stargazing, though. Having a way of gaining clues is always helpful. Crash is full now, nice. Yeah, that that was um <coughs> excuse me, that, that was completed yesterday. So the only one the only one left is um XCOM right now. But if that doesn't if that doesn't make it, that there will uh come around again. Uh, first aid, vicious blow, deduction. We're gonna keep liquid courage in. Or do we? So, hang on, that's. No, 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 no. For now, we won't put in stargazing. Oh, wow, it's that baked. It's those baked boys. Hey there, Biscuit. How's it going, my friend? You know, I was disappointed, because you never did slide into my DMs, man. My day has been good. As I said, though, I've been disappointed, because you, you, never, you never came and said hi in the DMs, man. <laughs> oh, I will, when the hour is late. <laughs> oh, I look forward to it, sir. Okay, so... Um, we're upgrading Overpower and Clarity of Mind. So those two cards are coming into my deck. Because these are levels... You're upgrading... Or we're upgrading them, so we just have to pay the difference. Because these are level zeros, they still cost one XP. And, well, Overpower is two, and Clarity of Mind is three, so we're still paying five experience. And that's fine. We've still got the three experience, so we can still go to the Carnival. Um, that can go... Over here is you're not needed anymore. These are picked up because they will go into the box for next time. Well, that's my pen. That's my pen. What's going on here? Is that howdy? Howdy, pretty baked. Thanks for the shout out, man. No worries. Howdy from Shepe. Hey Salvation, hey Shepe. Hope you guys are good. Indeed. Oh, this is what I was looking for. We'll get we'll get we'll get to that. <coughs> we'll end up with zero experience, which is fine. Um, and we'll shuffle that deck in a moment so that there is no cause of impropriety. Now we're going to adjust Amanda's deck. We again have five experience that we can spend. We've got three of aces. Truth from fiction. In the know. Otherworldly compass. Leadership. Momentum. Perception. Overpower. Vicious blow. I've got a plan. And deduction. And cryptic writings. As I said, we've got five experience. What does three aces do? If you commit three aces, if you th commit three copies of three aces to a skill test, that skill test is automatically succeeded. Do not reveal from the chaos bag. Then draw three cards and gain three resources once per test. <laughs> Exclamation mark waifu. That there 
I really should have turned up off the yesterday stream, but that there is for um, when we play Stardew Baked. I I am a huge sellout, and I will I will accept people's bids to choose who I marry, and fair warning, you're also on that list as well as Spud. <laughs> <laughs> if people pay me to do it, I will try to woo one of you two. <laughs> oh, we are the real prizes. My two waifus in Stardew are Emily and Leia, I cannot lie. Um, so, streamers, so my streamer choice for that is definitely Abigail. Thanks for the lurk, Baked. You gotta enjoy your stream. Well, actually, what's on what's on the dock if it's Is it gonna be GTA? Um, but you know, I uh, my GTA Five, my dude. Nice, nice. I'm hoping that with the new um, like updates that they're, they're gonna bring, the new updated versions for PS Five and um, Series X, that they'll introduce crossplay at last. Um, but uh, no, my yeah, no, definitely. If they introduce cosplay, I will one hundred percent join you because I, 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 it's one of those games I honestly do not want to start from scratch again. I've put too much time into Inspector Ronzi. Too much time. Um. But, uh, no, de for Abigail, 100% Abigail. She can have all of my amethyst and eat them for breakfast for all I care. <laughs> um, and probably Maru, actually. Uh, but my, the, but the real waifu, she's not in the game. So I, I, I can't, I can't, um, try and woo my better half because she, <laughs> she's not there. Yeah, I started over and I missed all of my toys. <laughs> I, that, that, it is gonna hurt. Even starting a new character, it really sucks. I cannot lie, the girls in Stardew are all amazing. And the, um, the men's characters are split. Or a spit. <laughs> Have you ever considered playing with, um, I think it's Stardew Extended. Uh... It is a mod for the game, and it adds like a whole new area, it adds a ton of new stuff, but it also adds a load of new characters and new romance options. I haven't seen much on it. One of the streamers that I watch, one of the biggest streamers that I watch, he has been toying with the idea of his next Stardew stream, his next do his next Stardew season, he'll do um, Stardew Extended, unless they release another big update like the um, Tropical Island. <laughs> Um, I'm trying to think. So, cryptic writings. What do cryptic writing do? Gain three resources. Four. You said if you have ten or more cards, other cards in your hand. Well, we don't really have such a great draw mechanic, so that is not helpful. But we could upgrade over power. And I could upgrade perception? Yeah, both of upgrading both of those is good, and we've got one experience left. I might actually put in the no in. Spend one, investigate, investigate any revealed location in play as if you were at that location. That that would actually be really good. Um, what are we going to take out for in the no? Especially in the especially in this upcoming scenario. That will be, like, an amazing pull if I can get it. Um, I might actually just get rid of one of my flashlights, in all honesty. Yeah. Um. <clears throat> yeah, so those are those decks. Uh, those three cards go on there. These cards... Oh, all. What's this one? 
Oh, otherworldly compass is a good one. I'm actually, I'm actually changing my mind. Changing my mind. Um, overpower's going back in. I'm not going to switch that one out yet. Otherworldly compass is just so much better. I mean, overpower's good, having like an extra might, but the otherworldly compass is exhaust otherworldly compass investigate. Your location gets minus X shroud for this investigation. X is the number of revealed locations connected to your location. That's actually can be that can actually be really powerful in the right situation. So we have spent we did end up spending five experience. Oh wait, hang on. I I done fucked up. All right. Well, I haven't, but I have. I need, a, I need to remove another card because I've literally just added a card to this deck rather than taking a card out to replace otherworldly comfort. Oh, no. No, we took out... No. I do need to remove a card, don't I? Because... Yeah, what am I going to remove? I might remove the second flashlight, actually. Because although having a flashlight is nice, it... I mean, both of them take up a hand slot, but the flashlight has only three supplies and becomes useless after that. The otherworldly compass is actually, like, usable throughout the entire um, scenario. So... That is the better option, I think. In my mind, anyway. All right. Oh. oh, no, let me mark this off. So we're actually going to be down at zero experience because we spent five and three for Carnival of Horrors. So we're at zero experience. Um, Amanda is already starting with three sanity damage, and so it, and um, Caroline uh, Caroline is take is already taken two. Um, so we will shuffle this on screen so that there is no shenanigans. Um, oh, I, I realized I kind of stopped explaining. Um, Stardew Extended. Uh, yeah, no, that this I'm not entirely sure exactly what Stardew Extended adds, Sal. But it adds a lot of um, new stuff. Um, there are some other ones that are, uh, seem interesting, some quality of life ones. There's, um, I've seen some that um, show up, uh, like they put a little up underneath where all your money is and everything. Um, they'll put um, like a little notification when it's someone's birthday, when the traveling merchant is there, um, if there's an event that day. So you don't have to go and look at the calendars or anything like that. I think that, that that's pretty. That's a pretty cool one. Just, there, there are a lot of quality of life ones that they that people have made for that game, which I think are pretty, which is pretty fantastic. And we'll shuffle Amanda's deck so that we got that because I've seen where all of my weaknesses are, and I now remember most of my weaknesses. I do not like the I do not like one of the weaknesses we got in the last scenario. <laughs> oh, that was not fun. That was not fun times. Um. So yeah, I mean, this month is going to be pretty fucking good. I think. Um, 
the two giveaway, the two pseudo giveaways that I've got going is going to be great. Um, some other little bits and bobs coming up. Um, so if you are interested, you can come and join the Discord as well. Um, there'll be some more information. There'll be some things that I will be asking of fellow streamers coming up soon. So if you are interested, then hop on by. Otherwise, I'll try hitting you up on Twitter or something. Time to go to the carnival. Uh, let's see. Oh, do we have any flavor text? Text. Um, aha! Here we go. The carnival is coming. Look, Sheriff Engel insists. I know it sounds crazy, but that's really all there is to it. He sighs, sits back down, pouring a cup of joe for you and one for himself. A dame in Uptown spotted a cracked egg wearing this mask and holding a bloody butcher's cleaver. He says, mo um, motioning it to the black leather mask sitting on his desk. It has a comically long nose. And it is, uh, and a strange symbol scrawled in yellow on the forehead. So, she calls me in. My boys and I pick him up on the corner of Stolston of Stolton Stall and Garrison. The sheriff jaws clench and his br his brows furrow as he recounts his the story. Fella did nothing but laugh as we slapped him in bracelet and we slapped the bracelets on him. Called himself Zanny. Said nothing except that the carnival is coming. Whatever the hell that meant. Wasn't until the next day we found the victim's body. Defense wounds. The uh, defense wanted him in a straight jacket. We were happy to oblige. There isn't much time to spare. If your research is right, there is more to this case than meets the eye. This zany wasn't talking about Drake's carnival, but rather the carnival of Venice, which begins just before the next full moon. Um, I believe I saw a pop-up and I saw you, you were here. I will sort out your permissions after the stream. So... We're gathering all the cards from the Carnival of Horrors Encounter, um, set aside, indicated by the um, mask icon. Choose one random location and remove it from the game. If San Marco Ballista or Canal side is chosen, choose a, a different one. Okay. There's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So, if someone in chat can choose a number between one and nine, that will be the location we discard. Six it is. One, two, three, four, five, six. Streets of Venice, was that one of the locations? Um, nope, it wasn't. So we can put that one. We can put that to one side. That's fantastic. Thank you very much. Put the other eight locations into play in a random circular formation. See page seven. Pop it over here for the moment. Page seven. All right. Uh, 
Uh, each investigator starts at San Marco Basilia. Shuffle the seven masked carnival goers and put one in play at each location other than San Marco Basilia. There. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Um, Mask Carnival goers um, side face up. Yep. Do not look at their other sides, that's fine. Um, set the following cards aside, out of play. Um, it is Cinquita. Um, power Tone. Right, power Tone. Mekido um, de la Paste, Bruta, and Gilda. Gilded Veto. Okay. Those are those cards. I'm going to put up here. It's out of the way. Uh, shuffle the remainder into the encounter deck. Oh, wait, no. And Abbas Alaguerra de Basse is also at San Marco. Um, and then these cards kind of get shuffled as our encounter deck. I really wish I had my um, dual camera set up because there's a lot of moving parts to this one, but we'll have the play. We'll have the uh, play area, actually the one that you can see. Um, you'll unfortunately not be able to see the encounter deck or the agendas, but I will read off those. Uh, you also probably won't be able to see my play area either. But, uh, we'll go from there. That's fine. All right. Uh, pick this up. Additional clarifications, locations set up in this scenario, locations are placed in a circle. Due to the um, due to the parade during the carnival, each location is connected only to the location in a clockwise direction. This means that investigators and monsters can only travel or count the nearest location in the clockwise direction unless directed otherwise. Counterclockwise, some cards instruct a player to find the nearest location in a counterclockwise direction. This is an exception to the above rule and should be followed as though locations are connected counterclockwise. Uh, across from the location across from another location is the farthest location equidistant in both clockwise and counterclockwise directions. For the purpose of this scenario, across from your location and across from you have the same meaning. Do not read until the end of the scenario. That's fine, we won't read until the end of the scenario. Alright, so, we're playing Carnival of Horrors on Standard. So, a Skull token will give us minus two. This token has an additional minus one for each Innocent Reveler underneath the Agenda deck. Uh, the cultist is reveal another token. If you fail this test, draw the top card of the encounter deck. 
Uh, the tome is minus three. If you fail, deal one damage or one horror to the nearest innocent reveler in play. And the final one is the monster symbol. Minus four. If you fail and um, Cinquanta is a, in play, it attacks you. So let's pop that up here. Well, out, out the way. So, and we have the agenda and the act. Um, pop that. Oh, I need to make more room over here for me. Oh, damn it. No, I can go up on there, that's fine. Shunt you over there. You over there. You over there. So. The agenda. We have eight accounts of eight doom. So. Last minute ocean liner tickets from Boston to Italy set you back a fair bit of dough. But after a tense journey, you arrive in Venice. The carnival has already begun, and the city is in celebration. Colourful confetti rains from above, covering the streets. Many revellers throng in the Piazza San Marco, the square outside the Basilia. The parade is to begin shortly. You find the nearest uniformed carabinara. It's not carbonara, that's for sure. <laughs> Carabine Irari. And show him a copy of the symbol you transcribed from Zanni's mask. He pauses to decide your trustworthiness, nods and escorts you to the Basilia to see Abes, Elgaria, and Dibalis. So, and our act. So the agenda is what the evil people are trying to do. What we are trying to do is complete the act deck, and we currently have no clear condition. Anyway, the Carnival Conspiracy. The abbess addresses you privately, so you know what is coming. You nod. Then you know what must be done. They are using the celebration as a sacrifice for their wretched master. Bring as many innocents as you can here, where I can protect them, but beware the creature's servants. They will try to blend into the crown with the false masks. So, as an action, the investigator can spend one clue times the number of investigators. <laughs> What's that, Chefe? <laughs> Yikes. <laughs> Yikes indeed. So we can spend... So, as we've got two investigators, we can spend two clues as a group. Look at the other side of a masked carnival goer any location. Objective. If there are a total of three innocents underneath the act and or agenda decks, advance. So we need to try and find a carnival goer. We need to try and find the innocent carnival goers. Uh, let me open the chaos pouch. Pop the chaos pouch over here for the moment. Um, we need to start getting this all set up. So we'll put decks here. And set these up as best as we can. Charisma, versatile, And studious. All right, you begin the game with one extra card in your opening hand. That is always spicy. Um, and we also have versatile, charisma, and those are my bonded cards. Can just go over here for the moment. Wow, well, something's gone crazy on my phone. <clears throat> Alright. 
One, two, three, four, five, six. Perfect. That's getting thrown back in. That can be thrown back in as well. Uh, we'll shuffle two cards back into the deck. Gained another two. actually really good um, oh yeah and each investigator starts with five resources so I'm currently not playing with um, base decks um, because I am carrying on from my last campaign so um, my decks are a little more upgraded than most. One, two, three, four, five. Clarity of mind, steadfast. Um, actually, that I, I'm fine with, actually. It's not the greatest starting hand, but it works. For the moment... Um, Amanda, we drew the Death Tarot card. So when you start, when you begin this game, begin the game. If Death Thirteen is in your opening hand, put it into play. So we have. It's just already plus one to her knowledge, which is great. It's a brilliant start to the game. Oh, don't, don't, don't you dare, Mike. Ugh. All right. Add that some bashing. Okay, so we are in the investigator phase. So Amanda's ability in the investigator phase, you draw a card. You then decide to put a card underneath her. I'm going to actually put Perception underneath. The upgraded card that we just upgraded. We'll pop that underneath Amanda. So basically her ability, for those that are unaware, is that whenever, basically at the start of each round, or each investigator phase, you pull a card from the deck, you pick one of the cards from, under, uh, from your hand, put it underneath her, and she will always commit that card to any test for the rest of the round. Until it comes back round to the investigator phase again, where you then discard that card, and um, you draw another card, and you put another card underneath her. But any card that's underneath her, if you commit to the test, it goes back underneath her instead of into your discard pile. So that's why it's kind of it can be really powerful. If you're planning to do the same move multiple times so if you like say you're doing three investigations it's good to have a card that will really help out with your investigations under there because you can use it three times instead of just once um, the problem is that she cycles through her deck really quickly <laughs> I've I don't know how many times I've almost gone through her entire deck um, and for just so that we are aware, Carolyn's ability is that she can heal... Um, she heals horror, even though she's a guardian. Guardians are typically tanks or damage dealers, but she's a healer. Um, and whenever she heals horror from an ally, um, or from any card that a player controls, the controller of that card gets a resource. 
which is really helpful. Anyway, um, the Abbess, her ability is exhaust the Abbess, move her from move her from her location to a connecting location, or to or to her location from a location connected to it. Any investigator may trigger this ability. Hey there, Clay. Welcome to the stream, my friend. How is your day going? How is work going for you? And the flavor texts. Pretty good. Nice, man. Nice. You caught in just at the time. We're just about to. We're literally about to start the. We're about to start the fun in the carnival. Alright, so the San Marco Ballista is connected to the location in a clockwise direction. You cannot help but marvel at the Basilia's opulence and towering presence. In the piazza outside, revelers dance and celebrate, oblivious to their peril. So this is a Shroud of Three and no clues. Thank you for the lurk, Sal. We will be here when you get back. Have fun with whatever you end up doing. And thank you for stopping on by and chatting. Um, so, place an innocent reveler you control under the act deck out of play. Is the active ability. Um, blessed and warded by the abbess, the Basilia is, a safe, uh, is about as safe as a place you can find in Venice. But it is not safe enough. Ooh, a Blastoise emote. Where did you get that? Pock Blastoise. That that that's that looks pretty cool. Which we've got new emotes on the way. Once they're done, we will upload them. But there are some. There are going to be some good emotes coming. Right, who are we going to have go first? Um, let me look at the hands. Ooh. Ooh, that would be spicy. It's unlocked, apparently. Lore object! Well, we already have lore object. Unfortunately, only level twos can get... Uh, level twos and threes can get lore object. But no, we've got other ones, so I might be moving... I'll be moving them around a bit. Um, hashtag not sponsored. We'll stay as a level 1 emote. Um, but if we manage to get a few more... Exactly, Shepe. Hashtag not sponsored. If we manage to get a few more subs, I can unlock a new emote slot. But, hey. Who, you know, who, who knows? That might happen, that might not. We'll see what happens. Um... But I think, I think where we're going to start is we're actually going to start with Carolyn. Um, and I'm going to car. I'm going to spend two resources um, and equip the spell Clarity of Mind. That's my first action. Uh, so my second action will be I'm going to spend one of the charges of Clarity of Mind and that will allow me to heal two horror from among investigators at your location. So I'm going to heal one horror from Carolyn allowing me to gain a resource. Um, and I'm going to heal a horror from Amanda, allowing her to gain a resource. And that's my second action. What do I want to do for my third action? Um, 
I'm going to move. We're going to move clockwise. So we're going to the Venetian Gardens. The parade's path meanders away from the canals and winds through a beautiful garden. Moonlight streams through the leaves, dappling the ancient marble statues. Uh, the Venetian uh, yeah, spends so for two actions, spend two resources, heal two horror, limited to once per game. The garden's quiet elegance stands in stark contrast to the raucous com uh, celebrations throughout the city. Um, but we have two clues on here. So that's my third action for the turn. Uh, now it is Amanda's turn. Um, so, Amanda is going to activate the Abbess's ability and allow for a free move to the Venetian Gardens. Um, and then she is going to investigate. Um, we're going to commit perception to the test. Are we going to commit anything else? <gasps> As of right now, no, we're not. Does that, oh, is that the, after the last clue? Okay. So as of right now, we're not going to commit anything else. And let's see what we pull. Give the Chaos Bag a good shuffle, as we haven't used it in a little while. And we've pulled a minus two. So, we already have two to begin with. We have plus one from the Death Tarot card, and plus three from Perception. So that's six. Six minus two is four. Um, and if this test is successful, draw one card. Draw two if you succeed by two or more. We did not succeed by two or more. Uh, so we just pop that back under there. But we do get to draw a card, and we do gain the clue. We got unexpected courage. Doesn't do much for us, but so that's the first action. Um, I'm going to pay two resources, and I'm going to play the hawk eye folding camera. So after the last clue is discovered from your location. Place one resource from the token pool on this card as evidence, limited to once per game at each location. When the Hawk Eye Folding Camera has uh, one or more evidence, you get plus one sanity or plus one willpower. If you have one or uh, two, you get plus one knowledge. If you have three, you get plus one sanity. So we're really aiming for that um, for that extra sanity. So the extra knowledge is always going to be helpful as well. It's going to be a huge help. Um, I don't, that, not that there's the right set of cards. So that was our second action. So for our third action, we're going to try and get that final clue. Um, 
Why do I want to play this so soon? Yes, because I think I have Amnesia. Yeah, I think Amnesia's in this desk, in this deck, so I don't want to pull Amnesia. Um, so we grab Perception back, and we're putting Obscure Studies, which is Amanda's signature card. Fast. Play when you initiate a skill test. Return the card beneath Amanda Sharp to your hand and place obscure studies beneath her um, and she has three question marks so as a reminder these icons down here if they are committed to a skill test uh, they add however many of those symbols to your skill test your skills are willpower knowledge might and speed um, if they're question marks you can count them as any one that you want um, obviously, you can't count the one question mark as all three. It has to be... You, you pick one that it will represent. Um, in this case, it will re represent knowledge because that is what you use for investigations. Um, am I going to commit a card beneath... No, no, I'm not. Because I can reuse... Um, Perception next round. So, we're trying once again. We have a base of three. We already know we've got three question marks coming. So we've got six. Let's pull from this chaos pouch again. We put the two back, so that's fine. Oh, but look, the two comes back right again. So we're just back in the same spot. This time, though, we don't get to draw a card. But we do get that final clue, and because the final clue is picked, the Hawkeye camera gains its evidence, and we have plus one sanity. Alright, well, let's flip these over, just to represent that they've taken their action. And then the Carnival Goer, we're not doing anything with that. It costs an action. Put the two back in the bag. Alright! So now we would move on to the enemy phase. Um, there are no enemies on the field right now, so we skip that. And into the upkeep, we uh, reset all of the action cards, everything becomes unexhausted. Uh, we each gain a resource. Um, and we each draw, and each deck draws a card. Ooh, the fingerprint kit. Um. And we draw a card for Carolyn. Ooh. That that could become spicy. All right. And now the fun begins. Um, cards are fine. Cards in hand are fine. Place one doom on the agenda. Um, agenda threshold hasn't been met, so we're drawing from the encounter deck. We start with Amanda. Uh, chaos in the water. Revelation. Test speed. Each investigator who controls an innocent reveler must also perform this skill test. Each investigator who fails takes one damage, which must be assigned to an innocent reveler first, if able. Alright, so we're testing a speed of four. Do we have anything in hand that can help? No, 
No, I'm just gonna. We're just gonna. Just gonna go off of what we got. We have a base skill of two, but obviously obscure studies gives me plus three. So that would be five. As long as we get a plus a, a, a minus one, we can live with. Um, but we, we would want more because I don't really want to start taking damage already. Minus one. Well, we were we were lucky there. We were lucky. We got away. We got we got away with it. We got away with it. Something that I just realised that if I end up pulling one of these things, I kind of need to know what is in them. So I'm gonna move this a little closer to me, so I can see what it is. I don't need. I don't actually need the actions anymore. Um, and the next one, Carolyn, you end up pulling. Chaos in the water as well. I am going to... This needs a better shuffle. Pulling two of the same card one after the other. Something tells me that the deck wasn't properly shuffled. So we'll keep the first one, but the second one we're going to... Kind of mulligan, and I'm going to do a quick shuffle now, just to spice things up, make sure that we're not pulling the same cars over and over again, because then that becomes very boring, <laughs> in my mind. No, excuse me. That's, that's something I probably shouldn't be looking into as well, it's just finding um, DRM, or like copyright free music that I can play through this, because obviously, well, I'm sure some of you might like the sounds of my voice, um, the silence whenever I'm not talking can be a bit um, overbearing, oppressive, I don't know, one or the other. Uh, that's one downside for board games, but I will figure something out. Because I want to find, like, good music that fits the game that I'm playing. So for this, it's either, like... I mean, to be honest in this, it's a carnival... Uh, like, 1920s carnival-styled music might be good. Or it just might be a more horror -y tinge to it, I think, maybe. Because obviously it is, um... A horror game. So, whatever I pull now, I will take. So, if it is chaos in the water again, so be it. It's chaos in the water. Nope, we've got Mass Hysteria. Peril. Revelation. You must either take two damage or take or take each masked carnival goer, shuffle them into the invest uh, shuffle them so the investigators do not know which is which. Place one in each location starting with the location starting with the location clockwise from you. You know, because we don't actually know where anyone is, we're just going to do that. Because what that actually does do is that actually puts one in the San Marco Basilia. Um... We'll just 
shuffle these up a bit. And then starting clockwise. Bridge sites. Bridge, bridge of size and then uh, the flooded square the guardian canal side academia bridge ratio bridge and then san marco basilia so we'll take we'll take that we'll take that that is uh it's good It's a good start. So I'm just checking a few things quickly. All right. Cool, cool. Um, so it's a new turn. It's a new dawn, it's a new day, it's a new life. Ooh. Well, that's spicy. Um, alright, so we're going to drop, we're going to discard the obscure studies, buy obscure studies. And uh, we're actually gonna put. Am I even gonna? Am I gonna? Am I even gonna investigate this turn? She's she's not able to do any. We're not able to do that. So we're able to go. But we we still got to keep going around. Um, but what what I mean, what is my plan for this turn? Even I'm obviously gonna heal again. We're gonna heal again. Um, so I don't want to take the initiative. I don't want perception. I might just put unexpected. It's either unexpected courage or plan of action. One. I might save the finger kit. One, two. Yeah, and then whatever we pull we can then decide. So yeah, unexpected it'll be unexpected courage we're gonna actually put underneath the um, underneath Amanda at this point. So because we want to see what we've got um we're gonna spend 
clarity, the, the point of clarity of mind, or the charge of clarity of mind, that's three, one, two, three, four, five. Yeah, 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 yeah. Actually, that reminds me of my bound, bonded cards. Um, we're going to heal the two horror from Amanda so she'll gain two resources in exchange for healing two horror who knew that clarity of mind would actually pay dividends so far we've already made um, four uh, resources off of it which is great So that's my first action. So my second action will be to move to the Bridge of Size. So, Bridge of Size is connected to the location. After you leave um, Bridge of Size, you're forced to take one horror. With, pang, with a pang of discomfort, you imagine how disheartening the view would be from inside the enclosed bridge, looking out of its cramped windows. I didn't actually realise... You can kind of see it. There's actually a frickin' like, creature climbing over the bridge. So, anyway, forced. After you leave the Bridge of Sighs, you take one horror. Um, we have two clues here, though. Um, No, I'm not. I'm not. My plan isn't changing. And I'm going to spend three resources uh, to summon my summoned hound. Uh, what I need to do is I need to search my bonded deck for the. Unbound Beast card and shuffle that into my deck. There we go. So, Summoned Hound. As an additional cost to pay Summoned Hound, you must search your bonded cards for one copy of Unbound Beast and shuffle it into your deck. During your turn, as a free action, during your turn, accept. During an action, exhaust the summoned hound, fight or investigate, either attack with a base skill of might 5 or investigate with a base skill of knowledge 5. And what we're going to do is we're actually going to investigate because this place already has two clues and it has a shroud value of 1. So we're in a pretty good position right there. And we get zero. So that's great. Our our summoned hound found us a clue. We might call it Scooby Doo. No, no, we won't do that. That's that's a terrible idea. What am I talking? What am I saying? What am I saying? Sorry. Let me do that. Just got to check a 
something very quickly. Oh, I need this cable and we'll put this on here. Fair enough. Um yeah, we healed, we moved, we summoned, free action. We're good. Alright, so, on to Amanda's turn. Uh, so we've got... I've got, an op I've got options, I've got options. First, for zero cost, I'm going to summon Lita Chandler, which is amazing that I managed to get her out of the last scenario, but we did. But that 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 you know, that that's actually super helpful. Um, when you control Lita, she gains each investigator at your location gains plus one might, and when an investigator at your location successfully attacks a monster, that investigator deals plus one damage. Now that's a bit spicy. And what I'm thinking of doing is I'm going to spend four and I'm going to get the gainful employee of Witten Green. Now, those are two ally cards. Um, those familiar with the rules would obviously think, hang on a minute, you can't have two ally cards at the same time. Well... I have the perk Charisma, which which gives me one additional ally slot. So I can have two allies at once. Um, so, what Witten Green affords me is... While you control a tome or relic asset, you gain... Plus one willpower and plus one knowledge. After you reveal a location or put a new location into play, exhaust with some. Um, or put a new location into play, exhaust with some green, search the top nine cards of your deck for a tome or relic, draw it, shuffle your deck. So I thought that came into play whenever you. Whenever she came out, but it doesn't. But that's fine. That doesn't actually matter. Um, what matters is we've now got more. We've got more of a health buff. We've got more of a health buffer. That is the main goal of this. We're more of a health and sanity buffer. Um, I have to wonder if that's a reveal any location. No, it's got to be her. So, from now on, with like from now on, Amanda will be pretty much leading the charge. Um, it's a, a little annoying because of um, take the initiative. But that's fine. Now the question is, do I want to start looking at the masked carnival goers? I probably do. Um, so we're going to spend two clues, one from Amanda and one from Carolyn. And we're going to look at the Masked Carnival Goa Actually no, we're going to spend both of them from Amanda. We'll look at the Masked Carnival Goa 
at the Bridge of Sighs is an innocent reveler. So that is good to know. Um, and that was the third action of the turn. Okay, so. Um, ready all exhausted cards. Flip those over. I don't really flip those round, so that's fine. Um... Each investigator gains a resource and draws a card. Ooh, a cult invocation. And rational thoughts. Shit. Put rational thought into play into your threat area with four horror on it. Rational horror. Um, horror on rational th horror on rational thought may be healed as if it were on Carolyn. If there's no horror on rational thought, discard it. You cannot heal cards. Uh, you cannot heal horror from other cards other than rational thought. You cannot gain resources from Carolyn Fern's ability. Shit. Well, that's fine. The la the last two. Clarity of mind, then, will be going on to rational thought. That isn't actually really that helpful, but hey, it, it is what it is. At least the weak, at least that weakness then will be out of the way early. <sighs> okay, um. Next, we place a Doom on the agenda, hasn't passed. Uh, Amanda pulls the top card. Lost in Venice, Peril. Either take... Uh, you must either take two horror or move to the location across from you. I'll move the uh, to the location across from me. Whoop. Um... We're at the canal side. Canals course through the city's main island, lined with gondola, tra traghetti, and other boats. The redolence of the festival clashes with the pungent odour of the water. Here, the music of the carnival is faded, replaced by the sounds of gentle sloshing against the, do the docks and canal walls. Did you hear that, chat? It's... Sloshing. Alright, we've got a um, trout value of two and one clue. Um, after you enter uh, canal side, place one clue on canal side from the token bank. Well, we just entered it, so that's actually got two clues on here. Nice. Um, and as we have um, discovered a new location. We look at the top nine cards of our deck for a tome or relic. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Well, let's hope there's a tome or relic in this bloody deck. Nope, 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 nope. Aha! We got a relic. Great. And that's actually really freaking helpful because... Ah, oh, hypochondria. <laughs> we we're about to pull hypochondria. We we're going to be pulling hypochondria in a, f in a few cards' time. That would not have been fun.
Okay. Um, and then Carolyn will pull Acrid Miasma Revelation. Attack to the nearest location in the clockwise direction with no Acrid Miasma. Forced. After an investigator ends its location, he or she tests Willpower 2. If failed, the investigator must either take one damage and one horror or resolve the hunter keyword on each enemy in play. I mean, that's not bad, I guess. I mean, it could be worse. I mean, that's too fucking horror you're taking right there just for entering the place. Jesus Christ. Okay. Um, so, that is what it is. There's, no, there's nothing much we can do about that. Alright, new turn. So, we discard the courage from underneath. I mean, we didn't even use it, but that's fine. Well, that sucks. <laughs> Amnesia. Choose and discard all but one card from your hand. Oh, this just became infinitely harder. Alright. Um, I need to get cards back, so... Um, I'm discarding everything but Perception. And Perception goes underneath Amanda. Oh, Jesus Christ. I, I don't even fucking know. Man, I don't even know. Um, alright. Shit. I mean, the fucking is what it is. First things first is I'm going to be spending two turns grabbing, clearing clarity of mind. Or clearing rational thought, even. So we've discarded that. Shit, man. Uh, Clarity of Mind currently now has no uses, though, so... Um... The Summoned Hound will grab the um, clue from the Bridge of Size as a free action. Zero. So we've gained the clue. Um, and then we're going to spend one of those clues 
and we're going to flip this carnival go we already know it's a masked reveler we can't test that yet until next turn but hey it, it's fine we've gotten somewhere Um, and then Amanda is going to um, investigate uh, up in the canal side. It's got a shroud value of two. We're already on a three, and we know we've got an extra three, so we've already got six. Oh, Jesus. Okay, some good luck. We've got the Elder Sign... Oh, it means much. Um, effects for this test uh, double the number of skill icons beneath Amanda Sharp, so that actually becomes six of you. You're running on nine. Um, but because we succeeded by more than two, we get to draw two cards. Oh! Duck. Um, her second weakness has appeared, Hypochondria. Hey, at least we've now got two of her three weaknesses out the way. Um, I need two actions to get rid of that, though. But I did get deduction. I'll keep that. Um, I'm just going to investigate a second time um, perception is going to be used again and pull the skull so we pulled um, that's what uh, still three. That's still six. Six minus two is four. We're still beating it by two. All right. Perception can go back under there. Oh, we grab this, and we've got one more action. Um, do I want to look at the card underneath? Do I want to look at the carnival goer that's there? Um... Yeah. Yeah, I do. We use the clue on Carolyn and a clue from Amanda. And this carnival goer is... Don Legario. Hunter. While resolved, resolving the Hunter keyword on Don Legario, his location is connected to the location in the counterclockwise direction as well as the clockwise direction. But he is worth one victory point. He would do two damage. Two damage and one horror. What was his life? His life was four. Fuck, okay. Oh, yeah, we got a clue on here, didn't we? We got evidence on here.
Man, I got screwed over with that amnesia. Hey, it is what it is, though. Um... And it's probably worth me actually killing him. Because if I can get him into the victory pool, one, it's a victory experience. Um, was it explosive amnesia? <laughs> hey, Mike. Uh, no, it wasn't explosive amnesia, but it was in. It was badly timed. Not only that, did I then pull on the next draw my hypochondria weakness for the same character. So she's had two of her three weaknesses show up. It's utter bullshit. But, I mean, this is how the game goes. There's not much you can do about it. Do I hear three? <laughs> I... S Actually, I wouldn't mind that. <laughs> I would not mind that. <laughs> how are you doing, buddy? How's it going today? You know, I actually have to check. As he was saying, it was already unlocked. As far as I can see, Clay must have done something to unlock that Blastoise emote. Oh no, I have the Blastoise emote. It, it is. It, it's under unlocked. Nice. Not bad. Work uh, is often more chill on a Friday. That is, that is, that is good, man. That is good. So you've come here to watch me get destroyed by an Arkham game. Um. Hey, we're done. We're up in. The, we're into the upkeep. So we refresh that. Everyone gets a card and a resource. What's the fucking betting? I pull Cryptomania. Oh wait. Pulled fine clothing, actually. That's actually really good. And. Oh, we got practice makes perfect. That's helpful for getting cards back into my hand. Alright. Here we go. Oh god, acrid mists. Acrid miasma again. Uh, the nearest location in a clockwise direction with no acrid miasma. At least I think that's probably both of the acrid miasmas in the decks. That is what they're designed to do. You're not wrong. You are not wrong, sir. All right. Uh, mesmerize revelation. If there are no masked carnival goers at your location, mesmerize gain surge. If there is a masked carnival goer at your location, flip it. If it is an isn't reveler, move it to the furthest location clockwise from you with no investigators. Then deal its one damage and one horror. Ooh. God, at least it... Yeah, no, we don't have a, um... A masked carnival goer, so we gain surge, though. Chaos in the water. Test speed four. Each investigator who controls an innocent reveler must perform this test as well. Each investigator... Each investigator who takes... Who fails takes one damage, um, and it must be assigned to an innocent 
revel up if a first if able. All right, do I actually have anything that I can help deal with this speed issue? Um, fine clothes. No, because that gives me a um, some uh, buff. You know what, Lieutenant Wilson Stewart? I'm sorry. Uh, you're not actually as good as I thought you were. So we're going to actually commit you to this test. We still need the Elder Sign to be able to pass this, though. Oh. Speak of the devil. He shall appear. We've got a question mark on him, so we can assign that to... Um, to speed. The Elder Sign gives me... Effect of plus one, and I may heal one horror from an investigator or ally at my location. Well, I have horror on me. So I'm going to heal that, and I gain a resource for it. <clears throat> okay. We're kind of in a good-ish position. I say ish. We're not. <laughs> anyway, it's a new round. Uh, we draw a card. We've got to take the initiative. That actually could be useful here. We're gonna play take we're gonna put take the initiative under Amanda Sharp. So we're not gonna go with Carolyn yet. We're actually gonna start with Amanda this time around. Um, and we're going to spend the clue to flip the masked carnival goer. And as we said, it is Don Legario. Um, and whenever he flips, he attacks. So he's dealing two damage and a sanity. But what I'm going to do is I'm going... Because we take... We only take... It does two damage. But because we have taken one or more damage, we also take one direct horror. I mean... If it's direct horror, I think that has to go on me. I can't assign that to another investigator. Let me just check the rules right quick. Be in learn to play. Um, not full screen, that fits a page. No, I want the glossary, please. No, okay, it's not that document. Um, it would be FAQ, maybe? Oh wait, no, that's um, like questions and adjustments to cards rulebook. No, that's the blob that ate everything. Do 
There's no the Zelda campaign mark. No, the Zelda campaign guide. What's that? All right. No, that's not what I'm after. It must be the learn to play then. No, it's it's not. It's not learn to play. Hmm. All right. Let me go to this one. One of these will have it. FAQ. No. Rules. Rules reference. I think that's the small. S I don't know. This is this is why I'm after. I think. Yeah, this is what I'm after. Direct damage, direct horror. If an ability causes you to take direct damage or direct horror, that damage must be assigned directly to the specified card. It cannot be assigned or reassigned elsewhere. But you can uh, dealing damage and horror. There are two types of afflictions that may be, uh, best best here in the game: damage and horror. Uh, damaging afflicts the investigators. How many when you are dealt damage from an order assigned damage or horror? Determine the amount of damage or horror you are being dealt. Place the damage or horror that is equal to the amount dealt. Next to the card that will be taking damage or horror, when an investigator is dealt damage or horror, that investigator may assign it to eligible cards which he controls. To be eligible, an asset card must have health in order to be assigned damage. Yep, an asset card cannot be assigned damage beyond the amount of damage it would take to defeat the card. It cannot be assigned horror beyond the amount that would uh, the amount of horror that would defeat the card or damage. And horror that cannot be assigned to an asset must be all damage and horror that cannot be assigned to an asset must be assigned to the investigator. Yeah, that's fine. Any damage and horror that's not been assigned has not been prevented is now placed on the card which has been assigned simultaneously. If no damage or horror is applied in this step, no damage or horror is successfully being dealt. If it is to prevent, reduce, or reassign damage and or horror. One of two applying the damage. Uh, uh, what's the definition of you as per the rules? You. An ability card other than you or your refers to the investigator who controls who controls, is engaged with, or is currently interacting with the card. Revision card refers to you, or you are engaged for the card. When the investigator is revision in the card, you or you refers to the investigator performing the action. All right, so it just refers to me. Okay. But because I, so, because I, even though I'm assigning the damage to wit and green. I'm taking direct damage. Which 
Which, oh, so I'm taking direct sanity, which I take it that even though I'm assigning it to her, I'd still take the sanity or the, the horror. Which... Actually, no, I, I wouldn't, because I'm assigning the damage to Wit and Green. So she's just taking the full brunt of that, and unfortunately she's dying. Mainly because I am fairly certain I don't have a Tome in this deck. And the one relic that I do have got discarded when I got Amnesia. So, feels bad, man. Feels bad. So that was the first action, was flipping that over. But the second action is I'm going to attack. So I already have three might. With the two from this, it's five might. Is there anything in hand that can help me here? Mm, no. And he has a fight of four. So minus one, if possible. <laughs> Minus one. Yeah, this is on Psychic. Anyway, he's taken two damage. Um, and I'm going to... So he's taken two damage because Lita gives me plus one damage. Um, and I'm going to fight again. Um, using Take the Initiative, we now unfortunately only have... Um, one question mark, so we are now fighting at even. So we really need zero, the elder sign, plus one, or pl if it's in there, the plus two. So... So do not want him healing me. Ooh. Zero it is. After that string of bad luck on my draws. She's getting somewhere. Uh, that goes into the victory pile, so we'll just pop that up there. Um, and that was action three. Alright, that's fine. Uh, put you up there so you're out of the way, so I know what I'm doing. Um, Alright, it's Carolyn's turn. Uh, we're going to equip... Well, we're going to pay... One resource, and we're going to equip some fine-ass clothes. Um, what's then going to happen is... That's the first action. For the second action, she's going to parlay the Innocent Reveler. Um, it has to be a value of... The lowest the value can be is one. It can't be zero. Um, so, yeah, we have a skill of four against the one, and we pull a plus one. So we succeed, so we take control of this innocent reveler. 
Now we're in it. We need to get the Innocent Reveler back to the San Marco Basilia. That's all the way on the other side of the map. Exhausts. Move her location to a connecting location, or to her lo or to her location from a connecting from a location connected to it. Any investigator may trigger that ability. I want to say that you can't go backwards. She f forces you to go round. I want to see if there's a rule clarification for her ability. No. Uh, not there, anyway. Uh, let me... Excuse me, cards? Let me, um, let me just check the PDF again. Sorry about this, but, uh, this is kind of the thing with the rules with games that have complicated things. I, I think it's only in the clockwise direction. You can't go either way. And obviously, as per the rules of um, Arkham, it's always the worst option is the one that you go for. The, the Grim Rule is what it's called. Uh, oh, yeah, the do that. I'm replacing your opening hand. As if frequently asked questions. We don't have the carnival symbol. Nope. All right. Never mind. We work with what we got. Okay, so fine clothes. Innocent Reveler. Um, then we want to move to the next location. Shit, man. Um, all right, we're going to the flooded square. So forced after you leave uh, the bridge of size, you take one horror. Um, forced revelation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. After an investigator enters attached location, he or she tests willpower two. If failed, that investigator must either take one damage or one horror, or resolve the hunter keyword and play on each enemy in play. 
so we're testing willpower. We have a willpower of three, so we're testing against two. Minus one. So we're good. We're good. So we only took the one horror there. That That's actually helpful. Anyway, we made it, made it to the flooded square. So, um, as the rising tide of Aquia Atta floods the square, you trudge through numbingly cold water. The parade continues across a makeshift wooden bridge that spans the square, too narrow for your comfort. Um, automatically evade a non-elite enemy at your location in the counterclockwise direction. That makes that doesn't make much sense. Automatically evade a non-elite enemy at the location in your counterclockwise. Oh, okay. So if there was someone behind me who was engaged, I could activate that ability, and they could be disengaged. Um, and there are two clues here. The shroud value here is four, though. That is a pain. <laughs> um, so as a free action. Our oh, summoned hound is actually going to try and uh, get that sorted. Minus three. <gasps> he failed. Alright. Uh, enemy phase. Well, there are no enemies on the field. That is a good thing. Um, so, upkeep. Uh, everyone gains... A resource and a card. I wondered where the cards from Amanda had gone then. Ooh, emergency cash. Nice. All right, so next phase. So we place one doom on the agenda. Actually, before we do that, yeah, before we do that, we're going to have a very quick word from our hashtag not sponsors. Well, the sponsors have finished, but I'm going to quickly just eat the rest of this chocolate bar, and I need to check a few things on my phone.
I'm not going to run another ad. So yeah, just uh, feel free to uh, chat among yourselves if you so wish. Or ask me any questions. So, is, have the new characters been released in Smash already? It looked like it. There was an update on Smash when I op um, opened it earlier. So, did, did they release um, both of the characters at once, maybe? I mean, that's what they, it looked like, because there's um, articles out and about at the moment, basically with, jeez, I can't get it I'm in a good place, I don't want to screw up my glasses as well, they're not on straight, I need new glasses. Because there's apparently video of gameplay of both the new characters, so unless it's a duo character set up again, I, I very much doubt they'd do that because they already have the Ice Climbers, but I mean they might. They were released yesterday. Are they they se they're separate characters, right Mike? Or is it a single hero set up again? Uh, well, we get the answers, so we apply one doom to the agenda. Um, it hasn't been mapped. Uh, Amanda will pull the first card. Oh. Oh. Probably a single hero. I haven't loaded the game and the article didn't mention. Okay. So a monster, a deep one. Spawn, canal side, prey, most innocent, uh, most innocent revelers controlled, hunter. I might try and kill that. Otherwise, it's just going to go for. Um, It's going to come round for Carolyn. Probably a single hero, yeah. Oh, uh, that I mean, fair enough. I mean, if they were released both at the same time, it would make sense. Um, Carolyn's pull is... Mesmerize. Uh, if there is no mask, carnival goes at your location. Mesmerize... Um, 
You can search well no, there is a mask carnival goer. Uh flip it. If it is an innocent reveler, move it to the furthest location clockwise from you with no investigators and deal it one damage and one horror. Ah, it's not. It is a Salvador Nelly. Doesn't say flip it back down. But it's question mark, question mark. So Salvatore Nelly's fight skill is equal to the investigator's base fight. And his uh, his um, evade is equal to the investigator's base evade. Well, he's not going to last too long. He does have retaliate, and he retaliates with sanity. Um, all right. I mean, that's not too bad. It could have been worse. Uh, okay, so they're kind of like how Zelda and Sheik used to be. You can switch between them during a match. One does more damage. The other sends people flying better. Okay. That's kind of what I was thinking. So obviously they made that change to Zelda and Sheik in the last game, didn't they? The one that had the interaction between the Wii U and 3DS. Um, Alright, so no turn. So we um, discard the card from underneath Amanda. And we draw a card. Ooh. Overpower, that's actually fucking perfect. Place overpower underneath. Two games ago, I think. I think they were separated in Brawl. Ah, okay, fair enough. I can't, I, I, I couldn't remember, so. I don't, want to, I don't want to waste blinding lights. Right, anyway, where do we want to start? Who do we want to start with? Um... Well, I think I want to get rid of this first. Never mind, you're right, it was Smash 4. Oh, okay. That's it. I can't remember, so... I couldn't remember. I, I knew it was recent. It definitely wasn't the current game. It was... I think it, it was when they introduced the Amiibo... It would have been when they the, uh, introduced the Amiibos, I, I, I would have thought, so... Yeah, I could spend the entire turn trying to get rid of Hypochondria, but then I won't be able to kill the Pole Man. I want to get rid of the Pole Man because he's hunting down Carolyn. Um, so, we're going to attack the Pole Man first. And so we're attacking. We're going to commit guts. Or overpower, sorry. 
um, and I'm going to do practice makes perfect for one fast play during your uh, play during a skill test at your location search the top nine cards of your deck for a practice skill and commit this card to that skill test if able shuffle the remaining cards back into your deck after the test ends if this te um, after the test ends if it was successful add that skill card to your hand instead of discarding it One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Doesn't actually matter what order I pull them in. Oh, the what? I did put another relic in. Damn it, I shouldn't have killed off. What's the face? I might have found the card that I'm going to pick up, though. Oh yeah, most definitely. It is Vicious Blow. I also realised if I want to use my Ornate Bow, I unfortunately will lose my um, Hawkeye Folding Camera. I might have to look into and see if I can get the Bandolier. Or basically something, or something where I can get uh, like an extra tool as a extra slot or something, just so I can have the Hawkeye folding camera, and I can also use the ornate bow. All right, and we're committing <clears throat> vicious blow to this test. So we're testing four against my base of. Three with the extra three, that's six. So we got the cultist symbol. So reveal another token. If you fail that test, draw the top card of the encounter deck. Minus two. All right, so we were we were at six, weren't we? We beat the fight of four. Great. Okay, so we do one base damage, plus one from vicious blow, and plus one from Lita. So that's three damage. Um, vicious blow gets added to our hand. Overpower goes underneath, and because the test was successful, we get to draw another card. We got another emergency cash. Nice. So that's the first action. Um, for my second action, I'm going to attack again. Uh, this time, I'm not going. I'm not going to commit the, the the vicious blow. But we do have the overpower. So it's currently five. It's currently five against four. So he needs to get a minus one. Minus one or zero or the elder sign. Well, we, oh, we got the minus one instead. Um, so that takes us to evens. Which is great. Um, and that does also mean we get to draw another card. Ooh, Prophecy. That could be tasty. That would be very tasty. Um, but that does kill the Pullman. Um... And then, do I want to move, or do I want to stay where I am? What can I do if I stay where I am? What would, what's going to benefit me from staying? Um, nothing is actually going to benefit me from staying where I am. 
So we are going to move to the next location. Um, and we're going to Academia Bridge. Academia Bridge, yeah, yeah, yeah. So the long and narrow Ponte del Academia is one of only four bridges that span the Grand Canal. Many pillars of yellow, many pairs of yellow eyes gaze from at that bridge from the Academy's high windows, seemingly waiting for you to cross. So forced, after you leave Academia Bridge, you lose two resources, but it's got a shroud of two. And it has two clues on it. I mean, losing two resources is fine, because she has two emergency caches in hand. Right, so we are having to test for Acrid Miasma. And her willpower is... Um, three. Three against two, so I need minus one. Obviously, overpower is getting committed, but it's not. There's no point in me putting it in the middle because it's not actually going to help. So, we got minus one again. Nuffle is praising us. He's basking us in his unholy glory. Um, but that's still, that's so it's it's space of two against the two, but we get the plus one from the Hawkeye folding camera. Um, and with Guts under there, we still actually get to draw another card. Got another practice makes perfect. Nice. That's actually not a bad end. So, we're now round... Oh, right, that actually goes into a discard pile, of course. Forgot about that. Um, so we're now back round to... We're back onto Karen's turn. Ugh, right. So, first off, free action. The summoned hound is going to attack Salvatore Nere. Skill of five against his two because it's the investigators. Five against two, so a minus three is still fine. And we've pulled the tablet. So that's minus three. We're still even with it, so... The effect of if you fail, you deal one damage or horror to the near <coughs> <coughs> nearest innocent reveler in play. Doesn't come into effect. <coughs> <Ugh. coughs> but we deal one damage to Salvatore Nero. Um, and then. Gonna commit one card. You might as well just have it face up, it's just me playing. We're gonna commit Steadfast, which gives me a. Um, it gives me plus one to willpower and fight. Um, but while you have five or more total remaining health or sanity, it gains an extra. If you have ten or more, you gain. Um, Two of each. And I have more than ten. Which is great. I've got one from the fine clothes, one uh, nine on Carolyn, so that's ten, but I've got one sanity damage. But then the two for the innocent reveler also counts. So we're good. Um and we're fighting it's gonna be five against two again. And we pull zero. I'll take it. That's another point of damage. <coughs> Excuse me. 
Um, and then for my second action, I'm going to try and attack again. I unfortunately have nothing that I can add, so well, I do, but I'm not. I don't really want to. No, actually, I don't have anything that I can add. All right, so it's all down on this. It's evens, evens. We don't want to pull anything bad from the chaos pouch. Nothing bad, please. We got the auto success. We got the elder sign. So, plus one, so that takes me up to three fights. Which is enough to beat the two from his ability. Um, and you may heal one horror from an investigator or ally at your location. So, I can heal the one horror off of me. Which gives me a resource. But that is... Salvatore Neri dead, so that's another victory point. Uh, that was action two, wasn't it? Ah, uh, I'm going to, for fast, I'm going to pay one. Um, and that's evidence. Fast, play when you defeat an enemy, discover one clue at your location. Because we need to start picking up clues, so. Um. Where are we going? What are we doing? What are we doing? What are we doing? We still got one action left. Do I want to even attempt to try and grab that book while I'm here? Or we'll grab the last clue while I'm here? I probably should. So we're going to attempt to book it. Oh, we've pulled the cultist. We don't want to be failing this now. We got a zero. So we have not failed. So we don't get to pull an encounter card. We do meet it, so we grab another clue. Um, and that is the turn. All right, so no enemies on the field, which is a good thing. We exhaust, we unexhaust cards. Everyone gains a resource and draws a card. Oop, I have a plan. That'll be helpful whenever I get clues. Uh, and ooh, we got the 45 automatic. Having a weapon actually now makes that a lot easier. <laughs> and we do an extra plus one damage. Uh, Alright, so. Doom on the agenda. Doom threshold hasn't been met. We pull. Top card. Amanda got... Carnival Central spawn at the lo at the location across from you. Retaliate. You cannot look at the other side of cast Carnival goers. Um. Oh, you you cannot look at the other side of masked Carnival goers at Carnival Sentinel's location using the ability. Okay. Well, that's fine. I'm, he's just going to stand there. I'm, I have no real reason to go to him. Um, and then Carolyn's card is... Ah, Pullman, and he's spawned at Carnival... Um, 
canal side. Jesus Christ, I'm going to be walking right into him. Well, all the monsters are coming out of the woodwork now. So much for it being shuffled. <laughs> Excuse me. Kind of wish I hadn't actually moved locations now, but hey, it is what it is. Oh, I, should, I actually does. I just realised her hand is going one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Shit, it's overflowing. Be a, what would be the card to actually get rid of here? Probably emergency cash at this point. Get rid of one of the emergency caches. This is fine, wasn't it? Yeah, I've only got three cards down here for Carolyn. All right, getting that, um, pulling that or the forty-five automatic is actually super helpful at this point. Uh, anyway, it's the start of a new round, so we discard the card under Amanda, um, and we draw a card. There's manual dexterity. No need of that right now. We're going to be doing some investigationing. We could wait a little bit on prophecy, so let's pop deduction under the card. Um, alright, so, uh, broop, 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 broop. I need to grab that guy, he's gonna, he's gonna come around and just fuck my shit up. And I need to find a way to kill him. I mean, that's great that I actually, that I kept, um, blind. Alright, no, there was something about hunting, I think he can only... He might be able to go in any direction, actually. In this scenario, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, okay, so mon even monsters can only travel in uh, clockwise unless it states otherwise. It doesn't state that it can go either way, so its hunt, its prey is it's, it's looking for the most um, innocent revelers controlled. So actually, I'm fine. As long as I keep behind it, I'm fine. Um... So what I want to do, we're going to start over here. We're going to start where we're going to start over here with Amanda. Um, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to get rid of hypochondria. So that's two of my actions to discard it, which is fine. Then for my third action, we're going to try and get that clue. So we're going to commit deduction. Are we going to commit anything else? Can we commit anything else? Would we commit anything else? No, because we, if, we, if we do that, we're, we're literally just ending up discarding cards here. 
Because technically, I haven't even used a card this turn. So, we're testing two against five? Yes, one from Death, Tarot card, one from the Hawkeye Falling Camera, and two from the base, and then one from the Duction, so yeah, that's five. That's in five against two. We've pulled zero. I'm happy with that. So, deduction. If this skill test is successful while investigating a location, discover one additional clue at that location. So we've gained both of the clues here. And because we've gained both of the clues, um, the Hawkeye folding camera gains the third piece of evidence, so I now have one extra sanity. Which is very nice indeed. Right, so. What, what next? What next? Well, what obviously is next is it becomes Carolyn's turn. Um, the first thing to do is we're going to move. We're going to move up to the Guardian. The statue's eyes seem to glow with light with the light of the moon. The guardian is connected to the location in the clockwise direction. After you enter the guardian, you draw a card. You're sure it's made of stone. Why does it seem so alive? Ooh, we got delve too deep. If I if I really if I'm really feeling spicy, delve too deep basically means that in player order you draw from the encounter deck. Once you've done that, you get to put a victory point in the victory pool. Um, but if I'm feeling spicy, anyway, there are actually four clues on this location. One, two. Three, four. But it's got a shroud value of three. So it's a little more difficult to try and grab the stuff here. What I want to do is I want to. Um, I'm going to spend two clues as a group. And my second action. To activate the ability on the act, and we're going to look at this masked carnival goer. Ooh, it is Savori Cavori. Or Sa Savario Ca Savio Corvar uh, Corvai. Hunter, while resolving the Hunter keyword on Savaro, his location is connected to the location across from him as well as in a clockwise direction. Ooh, 5 HP, but he's a 3 and a 3. I'm actually going to leave him face down right now. I mean, it's another victory point, so don't get me wrong, it would be great if we could get him. But I'm not confident in my ability Ability to kill him right now. I would be better having like Amanda here with me to get the extra damage from Lita. Uh, so what we're going to do, and because because he's not an innocent rebel, I, I don't have to worry about him. I am going to equip the forty-five. One, two, three, four. Let me make sure we've got. Yeah, that's fine. Um, so that's my third action. And for my final action, I'm going to use the Summoned Hounds ability. Uh, 
uh, to um, investigate this location. Uh, it's just round of three against his five, so minus two. And we've pulled minus one, so we gain one of those clues. All right. Um. So what now? All right. Yeah. So we're and no. It is. Uh, it is the monster phase. We have monsters on the field now. He doesn't move because he's not a hunter. He does. His prey is the most in innocent revelers controlled. So he's going to go around to here. But he's not going to do anything. He's not going to engage that because she has no uh, revelers. Even if she had no, if if no one had any um, revelers, then yes, yeah, she yes it would engage. But because there is someone with um, innocent revelers, it will target that. It's, it's only going to go focus on that one. So I have a few turns to get around to it, which is fine. Um, Right, so upkeep. So we uh, unexhaust. Everyone gains a resource and gets a card. Ooh, otherworldly compass. And read the signs. Nice, okay. Cool. Um, what is now? What is now? Oh, right, you know, we need to check the hand size, and we already know that hand size for Amanda is, like, well over. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Yep. Um, oh, well, look, look who's here. I might be able to kill that in one move. Oh yeah, I can kill that in one move. So the question becomes, what do I get rid of? I'm probably going to actually get rid of manual decks all right we place the doom on the agenda so we are now up at five doom on the agenda we're getting dangerously close to the agenda advancing not going to look forward to that But hey, it is what it is. So we're drawing cards. We take the top card for Amanda. Lost in Venice. You either take two horror or you move to the location across from you. Ugh, I don't want to do that because that puts me further backwards. I'll take the two horror, I think.
Um, Carolan. Carolyn. Watcher's gaze. Test willpower four. Each investigator who controls an innocent investigator must also perform this test. Each investigator who fails takes one horror, which must be assigned to an innocent reveler first, if able. Alright, you're testing my willpower four. All right, well, plus one or the elder sign is what I need right now. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Getting stupid lucky here. Plus one. Well, I might actually do this. I might ask Monsieur Skycheck. He's looking at Game Maker. If he can make a Chaos Bag for me, do something. Having an electronic version of it would be insanely helpful. I can just run and run, just have it randomly pull. Chaos things for me. I mean, it's nice having the chaos pouch. The chaos pouch is very nice. But... Whoa! 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 There's a raid. There's a Claire raid. Sound that raid siren. That's my raid. Wait, wait! Wait! I I need my raids. Uh, oh, it's not my raid. It's someone else's. But hey. Welcome everybody! Welcome! Oh, uh, thank you very much, Claire, for the uh, the raid. Hey Juno. Hey Airwick. Hey Big um Big Al. Citrus Monkey, hey, welcome. Hey Claire. Jesus, there's all of the raid, all of the hype. Jesus, all of your thing. I am doing well, thank you, Juno. This is fantastic. You did you coming in here is great. You're coming in. I'm actually doing fairly okay in this game, surprisingly enough. It's not beating me yet. Um, no, I'm I'm good. I am I am very good. I at least don't have a headache, which has been common for the last few Fridays. Ugh. But welcome those of you who are coming in from the raid. Welcome, uh, welcome to the shadows. Help us become legends. <laughs> Thank you, Mike. Yes. Welcome to the shadows. Help us become legends through your raids. <laughs> um, that is in reference to a channel meme where apparently I am uh, sponsored by Raid Shadow Legends. Um, hashtag not sponsored. <laughs> so, welcome. I my name I've said welcome far too many times. Um, I'm Karanzi. I am a variety streamer. Uh, I normally play Xbox, but I also play board games. And you have happened to come across <laughs> hashtag sponsored, not sponsored. <laughs> you happen to come in at a time when I am playing one of my board games, and we are playing. Arkham Horror, the board game, which is a fantastic game by Fantasy Flight, and also one of my addictions. <laughs> um, you have joined the Carnival of Horrors. We are currently in Venice, and we are currently trying to stop some form of Elder Being from being summoned. Um, we are on the sixth turn? And I just passed my second encounter card. Um, so this game is a deck building game. Um, I will show you very quickly some of the other side of the map. It's kind of difficult to tell, but there is a lot of cards, as you can see. Um, this is kind of the play area, which unfortunately is out of shot for the majority of the game. So you've got a very quick sneak peek behind the scenes. Now I've got to readjust this somehow. Uh, 
Um, that'll do. Uh, whatever. It's fine. We're back. We're, we're back. We're back on the action. So this is the this is the, the main play area where all of the um, location cards are. Um, and right now it's back round to the investigator's turn. So I will kind of try and explain what I'm doing as I'm going through. But also, I, there's very quickly that I might skip over some things very quickly. But if you have any questions, just feel free to fire some off in chat, and I will do my best to answer them. So. Um, I'm running a two investigator deck, uh, so I'm playing as two two investigators rather than just one. You can play up to, technically, you can play up to however many you want. There are some scenario side expansions that like can run up to twelve or sixteen players, um, but that's more for group play for like convention play or something like that. Um, but Right now, I'm playing with two players, or two characters. So it's the start of a new turn, Amanda Sharp, her ability is that she can place a skill card underneath her card, and it's automatically committed to skill tests when you, can, when you initiate them. So she discards the card that's underneath her, and I get to draw an extra card into my hand, and then I pick a card that goes underneath her instead. I'm already going to be doing a lot of attacking this turn. So the card I'm going to place underneath her this round is Vicious Blow. Any card that's placed underneath her, um, also whenever the uh, skill test is completed, goes back underneath her rather than into your discard pile, which is what would do if you committed a card from your hand. <clears throat> so now that that's dealt with, we go on to the main investigator phase. Um, what I am going to do first... So we're starting with Amanda up here. So this monster here called a Pullman, he is currently hunting down someone with um, the most innocent Reveler cards. Currently that's only the second player the second um, investigator, Carolyn Fern. Um, but I'm going to try and stop him from moving round. In this match, because there's a carnival going on in Venice, you can only move in a clockwise direction around the board. So luckily, I've got some time to get round there, but I don't want him to get to me at all. I want to kill it. I want to get it away from me. So, what we're going to do, what I'm going to do is I'm going to spend three of my resource tokens. Those are my resource tokens. And I'm going to play the I've Got a Plan event card. So, what that allows me to do is that allows me to fight that monster at that location. What that will do, what it is, so fight this attack uses my knowledge instead, uh, to, um, and I deal plus one damage for the attack for each clue that I have to a maximum of plus three. So we'll just uh, borrow Carolyn. Um, that is an investigator card. So it's got the picture of the investigator. It's got its name, but it also has some stats across the top here. Uh, it's got health down here and it's got special abilities as it's got health down here and it's got special abilities here as well. So Amanda has base stats of two across the board, and the stats are willpower, knowledge, might, and speed. Denoted by a head, a book, a fist, and Hermes boots. Um, so we're already basing off. We're using willpower, so we've got two will. We've got two knowledge. Sorry, we've already got plus one knowledge from. I've got a plan. I've got plus one damage because I have one clue on Amanda. 
Um, I actually get another plus one damage because I've got a character from a previous campaign who survived called Lita Chandler, and she gives me plus one damage against monsters whenever you successfully make an attack. Um, I also have a tarot card called uh, Death 13, which gives me plus one knowledge. And also there's another card that I've got here called the Hawkeye Folding Camera, which when you get enough evidence on, it gives certain buffs. If you've got two pieces of evidence on there, which we do have, we have the third piece, which gives me plus one sanity. But for two pieces, you get plus one knowledge. So I'm currently fighting off of five um, against the pole arms four. So we'll just give a quick look at that. Um, as you can see from this pole arm, he's got stats across here. So this is your fight value for the monster. That's its health value in the middle, and that's its um, evade value. You only really need to evade if the monster is engaged, but you don't have to be engaged to attack a monster. We're also committing Vicious Blow. So Vicious Blows, when uh, an attack is successful, you do plus one damage. So because we're attacking four on five, we kind of want to boost our... If we can, we want to boost our ability to successfully make this test, if possible. Really, I actually should have um, freaking summon Dr. Mill and Christopher first. But you live and learn. Now I want to save Prophecy for next turn because it will be more powerful. So we're going to... I'm going to commit a Dr. Mill and Christopher. So he's not a skill, he's an asset, but you can still commit him. Technically, if you were playing this um, at a table with other players, you would want your cards to be face down. You don't want... You, you're not meant to show your hands to the other players. Um, there's an element of kind of role-playing. You're not meant to say to someone, Oh, I can... Um, I If you go in for that, I can use this card and you can beat the... Um, you'll be able to beat your skill test. You would do it in a way like, oh, um, if you do that, I can help you. Um, so you're not meant to out and out say what cards you have in your hand. Um, but that there is kind of an optional rule. It's not something that's hard and fast. Um, so we're currently running at six against four. So what I've got here is I've got a lovely pouch which has oh, Jesus, come on. Without dropping them all over the desk, please. Which has a number of different tokens in it. And this is how you determine whether you pass or fail a skill check. Um, so it's it allows for more versatility than rolling dice. Uh, and we are currently trying to find something that at least doesn't drop us by like two. So minus two is fine. There are some pretty bad tokens in here. Um, but we managed to get plus one. I'll take that. Uh, so, Millen, it's fine. He's just going to get discarded. Uh, vicious Blow will go back underneath. We've got plus one damage from Vicious Blow. We do plus, we do one base damage to begin with. We do plus one damage for I've Got a Plan. And we've got one damage extra from Lita. So, we've done four damage and we've killed this monster. So that goes into the discard pile. Which is fantastic. And that was my first action. Right? Yeah, that was my first action. We'll pop that back into the thing. Right, let's see what we've got in our hand. I 
for the second action because we're not we don't want that masked carnival goer because that was an enemy so for our second action we're going to spend the two clues that we two of our clues on the act ability which allows us to spend clues times the number of investigators at the table or one times the number of investigators at the table um, and you can look at the other side of a mask carnival goer at any location. So we're going to look at the bottom of this one. All right, so that's an innocent reveler. That's great. So what that means is I'm then just going to spend this last... clue that was on Amanda and I'm going to use the ability here which is spend one clue flip the mask carnival goer if it is an enemy it attacks each investigator and its location it's not it's an innocent reveler so we're fine I kind of want to get over back over to the guardian because there's a lot of clues there I'm also worried because I haven't pulled two... I'm missing one weakness in Amanda. I haven't pulled three weaknesses from Carolyn yet. Uh, Kronzi, I'm here, but I will be lurking as it is time for me to go and grab dinner. I hope Arkham Horror goes well. Thank you very much for the lurk, Claire. Um, I hope that your uh, stream did go well. And go and enjoy dinner. All right, so it is now Carolyn's turn, because we've done three actions as Amanda. Thank you so much. You are most welcome, and thank you very much for the raid. I do really appreciate it. It, it does mean a lot. Okay, uh, so we're going to pay two. Read the signs, which is a spell. We can investigate, and we get to add our knowledge value to our to our value for the investigation. You may ignore any effects or keywords at your location, which would trigger during this investigation. If you succeed, discover an additional clue at your location. So we're already testing four against three, but we get an extra three here. Uh, which puts us up at 7 against 3. It's going to be very difficult for us to lose this, but it is still possible for us to lose this. And we pulled Skull. So, all of the, the... There are special tokens, so Skull is one of those tokens. And on this like quick reference card, there are all of the tokens that have special effects. And for the skull, in this particular scenario, and at this difficulty, it is minus two. This token has an additional minus one for each innocent reveler underneath the agenda deck. Well, luckily, there are none on the agenda deck, so it's only minus two. So, that there is seven, minus two is five, against three, we win. So we gain two clues from this location. So that was our first action. Our second action, actually it's a free action, our summoned hound, which is a ally and a spell at the same time. He is going to um, do an investigation as a free action. He can either investigate or attack at that location as a free action. So that's what we're going to do. He is investigating off of a base skill of 5. And with that, he is going 5 against 3. So he got some fairly good odds. There's still a couple in here we can not want to get. Minus 2 would be bad. Well, minus, sorry, my mistake. Minus two would be good. Minus three would be bad. 
Minus two on the five takes us to three. We've got all of what we need. So we gained the third clue. So we're not we're not dealing with him. We've still got two actions left. So for the next action, we're going to move to the carnival side or the canal side. Whenever you enter the canal side, you place one clue from the token bank on canal side. So that's another clue. What we want to do then is we are going to we're going to grab I'm going to try and grab that clue as well because there's only a 2. It's a 2 against my 4, so again it's we're still fairly good. A minus 2 is will do us fine. Ah. Minus 4. That's bad. And it would be worse because if you fail and Kinth de Qua is in play, it attacks you. Luckily, Kinth de Qua is not in play. <laughs> but we still fail there. That's unfortunate. You don't like to see it. Um, we are done, though, for that turn. Hmm. Okay, that's fine. So a background, so monster, enemy phase, monster phase. Well, there's a monster down here, but he's not a hunter, and he's not engaged with anyone, so he doesn't move, which is good. So next up would be the upkeep phase. So we refresh the cards that are exhausted. Uh, every player gains a resource from the resource pool and gets to draw a card from their deck. Ooh, another prophecy. And hypnotic gaze fast play when an enemy attacks an investigator's location. Cancel the attack, then reveal a random chaos token. If it has that symbol, deal the attacking enemy's damage to itself. All right, nice. Hypnotic gaze is a nice spell to have. Hand size. Now I know that Amanda was getting pretty bang up. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I can all find there. That's fine. Alright, so we're round to the next turn. So we place one Doom on the agenda. So the agenda is the um, enemies. That's the enemy's goal. That's what they're working towards. Um, so right now, the current agenda has... It requires 8 Doom. We're at 6. So in two more turns, that agenda will advance. Um, and we kind of haven't actually done anything towards our goal at this point. Uh, we're still trying to get around the board. But we've got one Reveler there. And we can, if we can get back here, we can at least get one underneath the um, act. And we've got one here, and we're still we're trying to get round. Um, it's possible that I can get one under there next turn if I really push it, if I if I really feel it's needed. Um, So for now, we're not advancing the agenda deck. We are pulling from the encounter. So Amanda is pulling first, and we've pulled Watcher's Gaze. So each investigator must test on willpower four. Each investigator who controls an instant reveler must also do this. All right, well, I've got to test that as well. Um, Amanda is testing it. Do we have anything to help willpower? Willpower, willpower, willpower. I didn't really want. I don't really want to use that because that could be helpful. Um, 
yeah, I, I don't have a choice. Don't have a choice. I'm committing. Practice makes perfect. Um, so that makes it an even test. Um, so really, we need we need that zero. We need a zero. We need a plus one. We need the elder sign. And we've got ah, we got the elder sign. Now that's it's not an auto success. You can still fail if you pull that. But each investigator has a unique effect if you pull that um, token. For Amanda, though, it's plus zero, so he doesn't gain anything. But what it does do is any cards that you have committed underneath Amanda get double the icons that you can commit to a test. Not that the card that's underneath there would actually have helped here, because it's fight, not willpower. But either way, it's still helpful, because it means we passed. But here is the problem. Carolyn now has to do this. I don't know what I want to commit. If I want to commit. I kind of do want to commit. I'm going to commit Blinding Flash. Or Blinding... Uh, is it Blinding? Yeah, Blinding Light. It gives me plus one to my willpower, which is what I need. It puts me at evens again. Um, so again, I need I need z zero plus one, the elder sign. The elder sign wouldn't really help much here, but I need something that doesn't lower it because I don't want to take. I don't really want to take horror. We got zero, so I'm I'm fine with that. Oh, I'm not, because it means I, uh, I've had to spend a card, but you know, it is what it is. So, Carolyn then pulls hers, and we've got Carnival Central. So, spawn at the location across from you, retaliate. Okay, so you're up there, so it's the Venetian Garden he spawns in. <gasps> mm, excuse me. But that's fine. He is not going to do anything really bad at this point to me, so that's fine. Um, alright. That's the end of the Mythos phase. So back around to the Investigator phase. So we discard Vicious Blow from underneath Amanda. Uh, we draw a card. Ooh, Cryptic Warnings. After you draw Cryptic Warnings during your turn, play it. Well, sure. Uh, we will actually gain two resources. Um, but we still need to put a card underneath there. So, we're going to put Prophecy. Prophecy is an interesting card. So, Prophecy only has one skill icon on here. But it's a question mark. Question marks allow, <coughs> allow you to assign <coughs> it to any of your skills that you're committing for a skill test. But, where it gets really interesting is, while there is three or more Doom in play, Prophecy gains question marks, so she, it gains an extra one. While there is six or more in play, Prophecy gains two question marks instead. So right now, there's six Doom in play. There's six Doom on the agenda. So we're gaining an extra three question marks a turn just for using that because of where we are in the game. So that's actually really powerful at this particular point in time. Um, but I'm getting parched. I need to go and get a new drink. So with that, uh, I am just going to we are going to quickly have a quick few words from our hashtag not sponsors, and I will be right back.
That's better. I, I might not start coughing once again. Ugh. So, what do we have? Obviously, I completely forgot to do this when Claire was here, so I suck. I swear I am a professional. Um, I am terrible at it, though. <laughs> I am not professional in the slightest. But I did say that I would do these later, so a very quick... Shout out, obviously, to the one and only Salvation. I'm sure you all know and love him, but please, if you haven't already followed him, please do consider going to do that. Also, give Claire a follow as well, if you haven't already, for those of my my um, some of my viewers. Um, we also, earlier in the chat, we had two other VIPs. Uh, we had Miss Shaw Chef, eh? So please do go and give him some love if you haven't already. He is a he's a really chill guy. It's easy going. He's so laid back, he's almost horizontal. Um And then we had one half of the baked duo in here. Uh, so if you haven't already given him a follow, please do consider going giving him a follow. I think right now he is actually playing GTA 5. I think he is actually... I think Shepay is with him. I haven't checked in a while to see what they're up to. Huh. Interesting. Okay. Sorry, my, my follow account is low enough that you would... That I notice things like whenever... Um, I think he's actually... I know he's, they, they've stopped playing, but that's fine. Still go and give him some love. But yeah, my, um, my follow account is low enough that I actually... I actually noticed whenever my follow account goes down. Which is something I probably shouldn't look at, but I do, because I'm an idiot. Anyway, what we need to do is we need to try and continue on here. Uh, what are we going to do? What I can do is I can grab that clue. Check one of these revelers and move. No, I can I can grab the clue with the dog. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to use the summoned hound to grab the clue from there. So we're doing a five against two. So we, we're we pretty well off at minus three. Won't hurt us. We got a minus two, we got the skull again. I'm happy with that. So we still gain that clue. And because it's a free action, we still have all three of our actions left this turn. Which is great. Um, so what we're going to be doing next is we're going to be using two of our clues and I'm going to look at this masked carnival goer. Ah, it's another enemy. Elisabetta Magro. She's aloof. Uh, whenever you look at... Oh, whenever you look at Elizabeth Margareta using the ability on Act 1A, flip her this side. Forced. When the Mythos phase ends, place one doom on her. Oh, shit. She's got to die.
Well, that was unfortunate. She does give us a victory point, though, so we kind of do want to kill her. Which does mean that the last carnival goer here is an innocent reveler. Which is fantastic. Um, so that was my first action. So what I might actually do is if I move to the next location oh excuse me yeah we move to the next location and then I'm just going to grab the innocent reveler with Carolyn so she's got basically she's fa basically faring both innocent revelers and I can gain I'll be able to gain two of the innocent revelers back then that's great actually um so in two turns, I can actually do this. Which does mean that the agenda will pass, but hey, it is what it is. Is it the end? Yeah, when the Mythos phase ends. Alright. Um, right, but I what I need to do is I do need to test Willpower 2. Um, because of Acrid Miasma that's on that location. Okay, so do, do, do. we're just going to test it base. It's three against two, so minus one, and I'm safe. We managed to pull a zero, so we're safe. We're not taking um, either one damage or one horror. Um, or and there are no hunters, so that's fine. We didn't fail, so that's the main thing. Um, and then we're going to, for my last action, we're going to try the parlay. And because we have fine clothes, we reduce the skill test by two for any parlays. But with parlays, um, but with any skill test, the skill test has to at least be one. So we're testing a parlay of one of knowledge against my knowledge of four. So minus three and we're still fine, really. Um, minus two. So we're good. Uh, and we gain control of this innocent reveler. Let's just shunt everything along a little bit so we've got some room for this innocent reveler. Okay, uh, next is Amanda's turn. So, we're, we'll be fighting off of a might of four. Now, I just need to double check the rules for aloof. Do you remember correctly? Aloof means I can't attack her, I have to be in. Uh, aloof means I can't attack, I have to attack. So aloof enemies is keyword. Uh, does not automatically engage in their location. When an aloof enemy spawns, it spawns unengaged. An investigator may use an engage action or a card that is engaged to engage aloof enemies. An investigator cannot attack an aloof energy enemy while the enemy is not engaged with an investigator. Yeah, okay, so we have to engage. <laughs> Alright, that's fine. So. What do we have in hand that can help here? We don't really actually have anything. Um, we're testing knowledge four. I will be testing against, I'll be doing four against Four because oh four against five because you've got five remaining health. If we go in with the fists, we'll go in with fists flying. All right. Um. 
should have saved that stunning blow for this turn. Never mind. All right. Well, anyway, we're moving. So forced. After you leave the Academia Bridge, you lose two resources. One, two. Um, and that's the first action. The second action is we're going to engage with her. Uh, so that's our second action. And for our third action, we're going to attack. Attack, attack, attack. So we're committing prophecy. Um, I don't need to commit stunning blow. So, we attack. We are currently attacking um, two, three, six against three. So a minus three and we're fine. And we've pulled minus one. So that's fine. Um, that is two damage. to her. And that is the third action of the turn. Oh, we didn't actually I didn't actually look and see what actually is this location. My bad. Relato Bridge. Relato, um, so, the Ponte di Rialato is the oldest bridge spanning the Grand Canal. It has endured for centuries, but it even um, but it's but even its stone may crumble should you fail. Forced after you le leave the Rialto Bridge, you lose one action. And it's got a shroud value of two with one clue here. That's fine though. Um, that's great. That's fine. We're good. We're good. I believe we're good. We got this. Thank you. Thank you, phone. Um, right. What are we up to now? Oh, no, that was done. That was all done. So, it's the enemy phase. Um, now, this is the first time that an enemy has been engaged. So, what happens when an enemy is engaged with you is it will attack. So, it has an attack value and a, and a horror value. Um, because we didn't stun it, I probably should have stunned it so I could evade it. But hey, it is what it is. Um, it means that it gets to attack me, and it automatically does one horror and one physical damage. I'm just going to apply that damage to Lita. So your allies and some of your items you can get can kind of absorb damage for you. Um, so that's what we're doing here. So Lita has three health and three sanity, so she can take three health hit points and three sanity points. So that's that. Uh, next is going to be upkeep. So we flip cards over, we unexhaust cards, we then gain a resource each. We each draw a card. Uh, the magnifying glass for Amanda. And liquid courage from Carolyn. Nice. We've got some liquid courage on us. Um, Alright, that goes back under there. Uh, we check the cards in hand. One, two, three, four. So we're fine on 
Carolyn's one, two, three, four, five, six for Amanda. So Amanda is fine. Um, all right, so a doom on the agenda. It's at seven of eight. So next round is when it will tip over. Um, we haven't gone through, so we draw one card from the thing. Watcher's Gaze. Um, Jesus Christ, thank you. Okay, so well, at least at the very least, prophecy goes under, so that is helpful. We we're not, oh, I'm not moving out. We've already got three on there. Um, what am I even? What am I, what, what's my value even at? Two. Three. Minus two. Two, this is where we're at six. Minus two is four, so we match it for Amanda and for Carolyn. I'm not going to commit anything and I'm going to hope that I can pull um, plus one or the elder sign. You never know. I might get lucky. I don't really want to be taking damage if I can. Ah! Fantastic, we actually pulled the Elder Sign, so we actually end up just about passing that, because that puts us up at four. Great. Alright, but that was the first card. We've still got one more to pull. God damn it. Mass Hysteria, shit. You must either take two damage, or take each masked carnival goer... Shuffle them so the investigators do not know which one is which. And place one in each location, starting with the location clockwise from you. I'm going to take the two damage in this case. Um, and we're going to, I'm going to assign the two damage to my summoned hound. I don't, <laughs> this, the, sum, the, the fun thing about the summoned hound is he's got a um, weakness card in my deck and if I pull that weakness card and he's there, um, I get engaged with a unleashed hound and a very angry, angry puppy. Well, um, so I think it's Unleashed Hound or something like that. Basically, um, an angry puppy that wants to bite my face. I think I'm good. <laughs> so if I can, if I can, as bad as it sounds, if I can kill it off sooner, the better, really. He's 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 done a good amount of work. Don't get me wrong. He hasn't quite outlived his usefulness. But... <laughs> I, I just need to make sure that it, it, it's it's fine. I need, to make, I, need to make, I need to make sure that I'm fine. That I don't pull that and get screwed. I don't need another enemy to fight. Um, but it's now a new turn. So that means we draw one card for Amanda... Thank God we've found her final weakness. 
Logical reasoning. Play only if you have at least one clue. We don't. Excuse me. Choose an investigator at your location. That investigator either heals to horror or discards a terror card from his or her threat area. It would be very helpful if you can get your hands on a clue, darling. Anyway. What we're going to do is we're actually... Ah, right, so it's the end of the Mythos phase, so we get one Doom on there, but it's not going to matter anyway. Um, I'm going to replace the Prophecy that was underneath Amanda with another Prophecy. Um, and now it is... Uh, the player phase. Where are we going to start? What I can do, if we kill, if we kill, um, Elizabetta, we gain another victory point, but it also frees me up to do things, because while you, also, while you're engaged, the only thing that you can do is attack, evade, Resign, or if the card has it, parlay. Um, any other thing will leave you open for an opportune attack unless the card specifies otherwise. Um, and an opportune attack means that they just immediately attack you. So we're going for just a standard attack. We've got the prophecy giving us plus three, and we're already running on threes against her three, so a minus three, and we're still fine. And we managed to get Skull again, which is minus two. Minus one if there was any revelers under, or innocent revelers under the act, or agenda deck, but there isn't. So minus two. Um, two points of damage we have killed. There's a better. So that's another point up there. Um, doo -doo -doo. So that was the first action. My actions over here are going to be move, free action, bosh, bosh. Well, the bosh, bosh. So what I want to do is I'm going to equip as a fast action for free a magnifying glass which gives me plus one while I'm investigating. So my investigation skill currently is at two, three, four, five. Um, I'm going to investigate five against that two. Because we need one more clue. This is my second action. The skull again. So that's minus two. Minus two is three, so we've got enough. We've gained that. Um, then as a quick action, I can return the magnifying glass to my hand. Uh, and then uh, I'm going to spend two resources to use logical reasoning as my third action I'm not moving with her not this turn um, and I can choose an investigator at my location that investigator heals either heals two horror or discards a card from a play area. We're going to clean up this horror damage that's been done. And that is beautiful. It's what you like to see. Uh, so, we're now on to Carolyn's turn. So she's going to move, and as obviously as we are forced from the Academia Bridge, uh, we lose two resources. Um, I'm then going to use the 
Abbas Algeria de Blas or de Bias. We're going to use her free ability to exhaust her, and I can move a character to her location. I'm going to move Carolyn. Excuse me. Um, because it's a free action, it doesn't require my move action, and it doesn't. I, it shouldn't proc the Revelto Bridge. So I still have two actions left to take. Which means I'm going to activate San Marco Basilia's ability to place an innocent reveler I control underneath the act deck out of play. I'm going to do that not, oh, not once, but I'm going to do that twice for the two innocent revelers I have. And that there is my second action, or my third action even. It's unfortunate I couldn't get all three this time before the agenda advanced, but hey, it is what it is. Hopefully, the carnival goers do not get shuffled around. Because that would be terrible. Especially as the only way for me to get clues again is I'd have to go all the way around to canal side so a clue spawns. So I can pick up a clue so I can go back to a, a reveler and the reveler would... Um, so I can uh, turn over a re uh, reveler. Which is just, it's just a pain. I don't want to do that. Uh, anyway. Um, there's no investigations to do. There's no attacks to do. Uh, enemy phase. There's no enemies engaged. These guys don't move. They're not attacking because they're not engaged. So upkeep. Nothing gets flipped. Nothing gets unchanged. Yada yada yada. You gain a resource each, people. And you draw a card each. There we go. Cookery. Nice. And. We've got kerosene. We got liquid courage and kerosene. I mean, which I mean, which one's drinking? Which one's for burning? Um, if an enemy was defeated at this location, exhaust kerosene and spend one supply. Heal up to two horror from amongst investigators and allies at your location. Nice. Uh, check hand size one, two, one, two, three, four, five. Once I called a fish alive. One, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah, we're good. <coughs> okay. So, Doom onto the agenda. We've reached eight Doom. So the agenda advances. We flip it over. Oh! Bayful Re uh, Reveler. Spawn. The nearest location with no investigators counterclockwise from the lead investigator. Hunter retaliate. Forced. After the Baneful Reveler moves from the Hunter keyword, reveal a random Chaos token from the Chaos Bag. If you reveal a chaos, uh, any one of the symbols, resolve its Hunter keyword again. Limit per once per round. Ooh, but he has... He has two. Um, he has two. He's worth two victory points. So. The clamor and celebration of the Carnival has, for the most part, drowned out the terrors you've seen in the city. Until now, the sun vanishes behind the moon, and darkness overtakes the sky. There is a solitary cry and the sound of crashing water. Within moments, screams erupt throughout the city, and yet, somehow, you see revelers, uh, revelers still celebrating with wide, crazed smiles. Uh, 
Uh... Okay. Um, but we still have to pull these cards, so Amanda's first. Abduction! Ooh. Ooh. Abduction. Test willpower three. If you fail, you must either lose all your resources or choose and discard an ally asset you control. Well, we're testing willpower of four against its three because Prophecy's lost all of the doom, so it's lost all of its extra question marks. So a minus one would be that would be okay. We've managed to pull a minus one, so we're all right. We've managed to hit three. I haven't actually seen that. And the next one, I oh, freaking abduction. So we're testing base three against this. Don't want to commit. Don't want to commit anything because he's going to come around and he is going to freaking hurt because his HP is ten. Anyway, we're testing evens here. We pull the Elder Sign, so plus one, and you can heal horror. Well, no one needs horror healed. Oh, wait, she gets turned. That's fine. Okay. We're getting out, we're running out of these cards. Shit. Okay, anyway. Um, Amanda draws a card. Ah, crap. Oh, well, it is what it is. Just have to try and get through this turn then. Um, what we ended up pulling was we pulled her signature weakness, which is Whispers from the Deep. Uh, this skill card subtracts from your skill value instead of adding to it. Force whenever choosing a card to place beneath Amanda Sharp. <coughs> if Whistles from the Deep is in your hand, you must choose it. So all of her abilities will have minus one for this next turn. All of her skill checks will have a minus one. All right. Um... Where are we going to start? Well, to be honest, Carolyn's going to be the one to parlay. So, we start there, I guess? So, spending one clue, we reveal the final card as an innocent reveler. She is then going to test parlay. Which is one against my four. Minus one. <gasps> oh, excuse me. So it succeeds into our possession, our control. Um, and then using the ability, we place... Innocent Reveler underneath the act. So our act advances because we have a total of three Innocent Revelers underneath the act and or agenda decks. So many of the Revelers under the sway of a f many of the Revelers are under us under the sway of a foul spell. 
They cannot see the danger emerging around them. You push your way through the crowded streets, gathering what few revelers you could find, and guiding them towards the relative safety of the Basilia. As the last of them is escorted inside, the ground shakes violently, and a watery shape looms above the island to the south, from the deep within the lagoon. The ritual nearly finished, the revellers in the streets begin to unmask. Place the set aside synth cooler enemy into play in the center of all locations. For the remainder of the scenario, Cinder Sin, um, is considered to be in play at uh, it's be a play, but is not at any location. The lead investigator chooses a masked carnival goer in play and flips it to its other side. Then we don't have a choice, it's got to be this one. Uh, where did I p Oh, well, no, he's... He's there. Alright. So, the next act. The civilians in the... Basilia are safe for now. Oh, so get to the boats. So the civilians in the Basilia are safe for now, but Venice is qui is doomed if we don't if we don't act quickly. The only way to ensure the safety of the of the sacrifices is to draw the creature in the lagoon away from the city. Sweat beads down your forehead as you realize this decision may be your last. Legs trembling, you head towards the moored boats docked by the canal. After the mythos phase begins, choose a masked carnival goer in play and flip it to its other side. Objective: If each undefeated investigate, if each objective, if each inve under undefeated investigator is at the canal side, advance. Shit, we need to get around to the canal side. We gotta go through all of this, and he's chasing us down. Um, anyway. Synth core. Monster, Ancient One, Elite. You may fight Synth core as if you are at its location. It is not engaged with you. Synth core cannot be evaded. After you fail a test while attacking Synth core, search the encounter deck and discard pile for a wreathing appendage. Spawn it engaged with you. Objective. If Synth core is defeated, R2. So R2 is resolution two. So that's the resolution you would read in the at the end of the campaign. I can't I don't know whether which one's any good. But he has eight times the number of investigators at the table's health. So he has sixteen health. So we can try and attack it or we can try and get to the boats. I mean, how much damage could we theoretically do? I kind of want to stick together from now on. Anyway, um, we want to keep ahead of the Baleful Reveler, though. Um, he's just a hunter. He doesn't actually say who he is hunting. So he'll just keep hunting. He'll go for the closest investigator. Um... First things first, the abbess is going to pull um, Amanda to the Basilia. Uh, 
Uh, we've got three actions. Do we go for three attacks? If we go for three attacks, what are we doing? Well, we're not doing much. Um, I'm going to spend two resources to equip a cookery because I don't have my bow yet. So I have plus one fight. So right now, if I attack, I'm at least evens on the attack. But I've got the minus one from the whispering from my whispering uh, whispers from the deep which is not helpful but I'm gonna have to try and attack I'm, I'm gonna try and do damage I'm gonna see what damage I can do to Syndra Quiffer or Syndra Quithical whatever it is the elder one So my second action, I'm going to attack, and I need plus one. It's the only thing that can save me here. Come on. Ronson needs a new pair of lucky pants. No, he doesn't. I got the plus one. So, two, three, four, five, minus the one from the Whispers of the Deep, gives me four, that matches, that's fine. So, we're doing base one damage. If the success was an, if the attack was successful because of the, with the cookery, I can, um... I can use another action to do another plus one damage, so we're going to do that, so that's two damage. Lita gives me plus one, so that's three damage. Um, I can't use Doggo, unfortunately. Um, But that's fine. So we've done 3 of 16 damage. So it's down at 13. So that's not too bad. It's a start. Alright, so it's the enemy phase. Um, hunters move. You're not a hunter. So that's fine. Um, so you move here. And we pull a token. If it is one of the symbols, um, it moves again. Plus one. So it's not a symbol, it doesn't move again. I don't really want it to move again. Um, nothing else attacks. You go like that. Uh... Alright, so the current agenda has three doom on it. So basically we've got three turns to either get through that or kill it before the next agenda goes through. Can we kill it in three turns? I don't know. That gets refreshed. Each of you gain a resource, you each draw a card. Knife, okay. Discover a, discover a clue of your location, okay. That's good. That's helpful. Either way, 
It's now back round to the Mythos phase, so we place one Doom on the agenda. Uh, Amanda draws a card. Chaos in the water. Test feet. Uh, no one's controlling a reveler, so it's just her testing feet for the Chaos in the water. Oh man, she is probably taking damage here. Oh, she's most definitely taking damage. Because I've got minus one from that, so I'm at one. There's no way I can even pass this. Damn you, whispers from the deep. Um... Minus three if, if it, it damage to the nearest innocent. There isn't one. But you're taking one damage. And put the damage on and put the damage on you. Um, and then Carolyn pulls and you pulled a wreathing appendage, retaliate. Force. After wreathing appendage attacks you, discard a random card from your hand. Um, when wreathing appendage is defeated, if Sinskra is in play, deal one damage to it. Cool. That's helpful. Ay, 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 ay. Alright, no, that's fine. We can deal with that. Alright. Son of a... You son of a bitch... Um, so we're back round to the new turn. So, finally, Whispers of the Deep gets put into the discard pile. That's all of her weaknesses down. But we're running low on cards. Ooh, the ornate bow. What are we going to put underneath her, though? What actually would be helpful at this point? If we are going for attacks... We equip that, we fire the arrow, Do we want to do it? <clears throat> no, I need to, I need to work I need to work out the plan of action here. So if we equip the ornate bow, we discard those. We drop down some of our stats, but that's fine because we get plus two to speed, and we fight using speed because we're using the bow. So it's a base of four. But. It also does plus two damage for the attack, which means that we are doing three damage, four damage if you count Lita. Four damage and a, per attack. You do have to re-notch the bow, but that's fine. If he comes a knock-in, that is also fine, because we can deal with that. I've got cards in both hands that can deal with him. He's not that scary. So I might let him come round, because if I can grab the extra two victory points, that's great. And that will do an extra point of damage to it anyway, and then I can just start laying into him. 
see here. We want to keep. We want to keep stunning blow. We're gonna. We're gonna put. We're gonna put the knife underneath Amanda. Sorry for the strategizing, but this is where the game kind of comes in. I need to plan out what I'm doing in advance. Um, where I want to start. Is I want to keep not a gaze. I don't actually want to use any of those. That's fine. So I'm going to attack the writhing append appendage with my 45 automatic, using one of the sh uh, one of the ammo. Um, I fight. I do plus one might. So I'm doing three against two. Because I'm in the same location as Lita, I get the plus one might from her, so it's four against two. I pulled a zero. So I do plus one damage from the automatic, so that's two damage to the reading appendage. So we've killed it. Uh, when it is defeated, if Sindathiqua is in play, I do one damage to it. So that was my first action. I'm going to use my free action to get the doggo to fight it. So it's fighting off of a six. I'm not committing anything, am I? No. Because I need to save these cards. Excuse me. So it's fighting off of a six. Minus one. So six minus one is five. We've got enough. We hit it. It does one damage plus one from Lita. So that's another two damage. Um, for my second action, I'm going to fire off the automatic, the, uh, the 45 again. Um, this time it is uh, four against four. So zero plus one or Elder Sign would be lovely right about now. Zero. Well, sorry, zero plus one. What am I doing? I'm going blind. I cannot see what's in front of me. I've been staring at a screen for too long. I need to get my eyes checked. Anyway, plus one, that's enough. That That is more than enough to hit. So base damage, plus one for the automatic, plus one for Lita. That's another three damage. So it's at nine of the 16. So that's seven damage left. Uh, for my second... Well, for my third action, I'm going to fire the automatic again. So once again, a zero, a plus one, or the elder sign is what we are looking for. That one's a zero. So I'm happy with that. That is another three points of damage. And as they say, that's a lot of damage. So that's my turn. Well, that, that's her turn. So, next. What are we up to on Tyler? 4 hours and 11. That's not bad. Um, so, yeah, I'm going to equip the ornate bow. Um, it's a two handed weapon, so I do have to discard the Hawkeye folding camera. It served me well, but it's outlived its purpose for now. Um, and I'm discarding the cookery as well. Um, it costs four resources for me to play this bad boy. And it has one ammo. So 
So it's fights. It's attacking off of. Um, it's attacking off of speed now. So we're currently doing four against four. So it's currently even. How much damage do I need to do? I'm at 12, and I said it was, what, 16? So I need four. So I need to hit with this attack. So I'm committing one card. I'm committing my Universal Solvent. Which has a question mark on it. So right now, I can afford a minus one. So I expend the shot from the bow. And we get zero. So, yeah, that means we have dealt four damage. Uh, yeah, so. GG, chat. We killed it. We got the kill. F's in chat for Sindakthikwa. I'm, I'm going to put this in chat so you can actually see what I'm trying to pronounce. C-N-I-D-A-T-H-Q-U-A. That is what we just beat. But, when it's been defeated, we read Resolution 2. I wonder, what's go I wonder what is going to happen now. Uh, Alright, so if no resolution was reached, no... Resolution 1, no. Resolution 2. The creature recoils as gobs of its jelly-like flesh rip and tear from its body, splashing into the lagoon. It makes no sound as its torn body sinks into the depths. The chanting in the city plunges into mournful silence. As you return to the ca uh, canal side streets, black feathers fall from the sky where bright confetti once fluttered. You can only wonder how long it will take the creature to recover. Oh, so we didn't... Sindath, Sindath Kwa. Yeah, that that that's a, that. Yeah, that that's a good shout. Sindath Kwa is probably actually fairly accurate. Um. All right. So additional rewards. Okay, so, well, I'm for, right, so, uh, br 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 let me clean this up a little bit. Nope, that's the wrong pot. Just so I can <laughs> Here's a comparison chat. Carolyn's deck ended up with that many cards left in it. That was Amanda's. <laughs> Four cards left in Amanda's deck. So what I will say is uh, when your deck, your player deck runs out and you're forced to draw a card, what happens is, is you shuffle your discard into a new draw deck, and you take one point of horror. So you don't run out of cards. So that's that's always a good... That, that's a plus. Fuck. I'll pick those up in a moment. 
Um, what I need to do is I need to grab the bonded card so I can put that there. And these cards are cards that do not go into the deck. Anyway, um, I needed this. I trust the open envelope. Um, I need to write down that uh, Sindathqua was has retreated to re to nurse its wounds. Um, each investigator earns experience equal to victory X value each card for each card in the, the victory display. Um, we only had three, so we gained three experience. Now we came out as we went into it, really. Three experience. Um, and then we proceed to additional rewards. So, additional rewards. In player order, each investigator may choose one of the following masks to add to his or her deck. Pantalon. Med uh, Medicio della Paste. A Bruta. Or Gilded Valtro. The chosen card does not count towards the investigator's play deck. So, um, is Sal still here? Sal, if you are still here and you are still listening, this one might interest you. Medicio del Pastel or Pastore. It's a freaking witch doctor mask, man. Um, Alright, so. We'll start with it. Medico del Pastel. Limit one mask in play. After. It enters play, you heal one damage or one horror. Uh, when you initiate a non-willpower test, discard the card. Use willpower for that test instead. Um, for Pantalone, after it enters play, you discard. You can draw. You draw two cards. Uh, when you initiate a non-knowledge. Uh, Test, discard it and use knowledge for that test. In Gilded of Volto, when it enters play, treat the next asset you play this turn as if it has fast. When you initiate a non speed test, discard it and you can use speed instead. Or Bouter. Whenever Bouter enters play, you gain two resources whenever you would test. Um, do a non-might test. You can use might instead. Uh, 
Okay, so I'm trying to think. I'm gonna I'm gonna start with Amanda. But I'm wondering what I re what is Amanda desperately in need of. I honestly think the best thing that Amanda could take is pantalone. Mainly for the draw too. Her, if she has the ability to draw basically two cards after getting um, Amnesia, I mean, that, that's a way of refilling her hand very quickly. So, yeah, I think um, I think that card for Amanda. <clears throat> Excuse me. Now, for Carolyn, I really don't think there's a question. There, I, don't, I really do not think there is any question or any doubt in my mind as to which card it should be. Um... I'm going to say it's going to be Medico Della Paste, mainly because you can heal one damage or one horror, and being able to heal one horror just works so well with Carolyn Fern's ability to gain resources whenever horror is healed. So, yeah. So those are the cards that we're going to be taking. Um, I should probably note this down. Um, and while I'm doing this, obviously, I mean, I, I know this isn't really too inciting, but please do stay until the end. Uh, we will be looking for someone to go and raid. Um, and also... Um, just some, they're just gonna give out some huge thank yous. Um, if anyone is still here from Claire's raid, please do consider hitting that follow button. I would greatly appreciate it. Uh, if you haven't followed already for uh, from other things, because I know obviously I know a lot of you were part of Sal's all running. We all run in the same kind of groups, so likely most of you already were follows. But any more is always welcome. Um, for now, right, I really need to get something different for this. Okay, so, Amanda. I'm going to pop it down here. Amanda took... Pantalone. Mask. Carolyn. Took. Medico. Della. Pasta. Mask. And as we're not done, so if there are no innocent revelers, revelers underneath the act deck and at least one under the agenda proceeds to sacrifices made, well, nope, that's not the case. It is if there are no innocent revelers underneath the agenda deck and three underneath the act deck proceed to Abbas Satisfied. Grazie mille. Thank you for your help. Algeria, um, Allegria says as you return to the Basilia. Thanks to you, there were few casualties. I shudder to think what might have happened had you not arrived. Should you ever require assistance, please do not hesitate to ask. Anyone investigator may choose to add Abbas Aleria de Vasse to his or her deck. This card does not count towards the investigator's deck size. I think we're going to. She's going to go to. Um, I 
I'm going to pop her into Carolyn's decks deck, mainly because the Investigator ally we got from the blob that ate everything wasn't particularly great. So yeah, that there is everything kind of all added up. Um, and the FS doesn't count towards the deck size, which is great. So um, I want to pick these all up. You are the agenda. So you go over here with the agenda card. There. Um, so yeah, so next week will be the start of the Dunwich Legacy. Now, we are now getting into territory of stuff I haven't played, so I have no idea what's coming. Um, I kind of knew what was going on here. Uh, having done it before. Um, but as of from now, I am completely in the dark as to what's coming up in the game. Oh, community challenge. Thank you very much, Mike, for the 2,486 points for XCOM 2. We've raised 5k now for that, so that's at 33% done. So, for those of you who have been lurking, if you wish to do so, please do consider dropping some of those points in there for that challenge, if you so choose. It is not, oblig obligo uh, um, it's not obligatory, but I would appreciate it if you would at least consider it. Um, Okay, you go together, you all go together, so do you. All of these places come together. Uh, need to be face down. What are you? Okay, you are all these. You are part of this lot. You can go here, you can go here. One, two, and three. Excuse me. Please, please do stick around. Um, we will be uh, finding someone to raid. Go and give them some love and support. That goes there. This goes over here. I saw cards on the ground. They go on top of that. This goes on top of that. And that is the Carnival of Horrors. Thank you very much for joining for this 
scenario pack. Um, as I said, yeah. Don't wish Legacy starts next week. Uh, there won't be another vote for what we're playing on the Discord um, until probably two or three weeks into Dunwich. It depends. I want to find a nice, nice break point in it. Um, I know that there, I know that there is a train ride in it. So maybe before the train ride, we will do another vote to see where we're going. Because um, there are still a couple of ones that can be done that are still technically in Arkham. There's one that is based in Louisiana that we could do. Um, but we'll see. We will uh, make that decision when the time comes. Well, you guys, the community at large, will make the decision when the time comes. Uh, there is currently a vote going on right now over on my Discord. Uh, please feel free to join the Discord. Once you are there, I will uh, I will sort out the roles as needed. Um, and with that, you can then will be able to vote on what the Saturday Night Gaming Live game will be. Whether that will be um, Jackbox. Super Smash Bros. Ultimate, Mario Kart, or It's Quiz Time. <laughs> oh, excuse me. Um, obviously, the community is welcome to join with those, and depending on what we get, so obviously, like, Jackbox is fairly simple. There's an audi there's audience room, so people in the audience can join. Um, Mario Kart, it will likely, if there's enough people, will run a tournament-style game. Uh, Super Smash Brothers, it's eight people in the room, but we can switch people out. And same with um, It's Quiz Time, it plays up to eight people, but we can switch people out as is needed. Uh, Alright, there goes in the deck. Uh, cards, please. I'm going to have to get onto the floor and double check to make sure that none of them fell under my PC. Um, I don't think so. Kerosene. Yeah, I think that's all of the cards that were in hand. So, let us go to the credits. So, a uh, very quick shout out to the moderators of uh, The Real Atmisk and also to Fist of Valhalla. They were both here. It doesn't say that now, but they were. And also to Streamlabs for its constant support. Um, and a very huge shout out to Clairvoyance for the raid and all of the raiders that came in. Shout out to all of those people lurking. Shout out to those VIPs that appeared, Shepe, uh, and Biscuit of Completely Baked. And thank you to Salvation for coming in as well. All of your support is greatly appreciated. You are all fantastic people. Uh, so... With that said, let us find someone who can raid, and then we will do that outro. You know what? We got we got some decent loves from ye old lost pixel player. So let's go and say hi to him again. He is once again playing Slay the Spire. I enjoyed watching him. Where'd he go? Show less, please. You know, let me hit refresh just to make sure because my Twitch is playing up. Um, 
Yep, he's still playing. Let's just make sure that he's actually there. Yep. So, we will be raiding Lost Pixel Plays. He is playing Slay the Spire. But for now, thank you very much for watching. If you are watching this post on Twitch or on YouTube, I greatly appreciate it. If you haven't considered it already, please do think about hitting that follow or subscribe buttons in the relevant locations. If you are on over on YouTube, uh, think about hitting that thumbs up or leaving a friendly constructive comment. If you do that, it really helps out with the algorithm of the video. But if you can do both, then that would doubly help out with the exposure for the video. And you would be majestic people. Better yet, consider coming over live and watching us live interact in chat or even just lurking in chat. Either way, it is all good. Uh, so, let us get this raid started for those of you who are staying around for it. But, for everyone else, until next time, stay safe.